Sports on Little Falls Radio, sponsored by Bob Lemire Roll Off and Refuge, Peterson Body Shop, Pine Country Bank, the Pizza Ranch in Little Falls, Schlenner Winter and Company, Flyer Sports, sponsored by Stand Up For You, Hilmerson Collision Center, We Checks, Floors and More, Fleet Supply on Little Falls, and Ron's Oil and Propane. And this Flyer broadcast is sponsored by Midwest Machinery and Rudolph Auto Solutions. And a very good evening, hockey fans, and welcome to the Exchange Arena in Little Falls, where tonight we kick off the high school playoffs for boys high school hockey, the Section 6A quarterfinals. As the seventh ranked team in the latest Let's Play Hockey poll, the Little Falls Flyers with the number one seed, 10-4-1, play host to the number nine seed, Prairie Center North Stars, with a record of 2-12-1. Hello everyone, James Hershey with you. Glad to be with you once again on Flyer Media Productions tonight along with Q92 and FallsRadio.com. Jamie Pennett joining me tonight and Christina is our game engineer in our Little Falls studios. Well, Jamie, the second season has begun and I tell you what, it's a lot of excitement at this time of the year, but there's also a lot of concern each and every game. Well, there is. Uh, the last thing you want to do is have to have a virus moment and not be able to play. We saw an example last night with Mankato East in section 1A. They found out not long before their quarterfinal game that their, essentially their entire varsity team was quarantined. They had to use JV players. So as the number two seed in section 1A, they lost that quarterfinal game to La Crescent. It was also another instance with Farmington having to do something similar in their loss to Owatonna. We've had some other teams that have had to just hang it up because they've either had a positive test or they came in contact with a team that had a positive test and that's how Prairie Center is in tonight's game. They did not play on Tuesday night. Wadena Deer Creek had close contact with Detroit Lakes last week. As a result, Wadena Deer Creek went into quarantine. They were forced to forfeit the Tuesday night first round game against Prairie Center. I'm labeling them COVID forfeits. And of course, the other game, which was supposed to be River Lakes taking on Breckenridge Wapiton, the same thing happened there. River Lakes was unable to play. They could play on, I believe it was Thursday, but the unable to play on Tuesday. So they also had to forfeit that game. So Breckenridge Wap will move on into the quarterfinals tonight. Breckenridge Wapiton will be in Fergus Falls and those two teams played earlier this year. Fergus Falls beat Breckenridge Wapiton 14 to nothing. So we were expecting to see two section 6A first round games Tuesday night. No one hit the ice. Not at all. Of course, tonight is a one versus nine matchup. These two teams have met before once. It was a 10-1 win for the Flyers over Prairie Center. That game was here at the Exchange Arena in Little Falls. 66 shots on goal for the Little Falls Flyers, just 11 for the Prairie Center North Stars. Flyers led 4-0 after one, 8-1 after two, and they cruised to that 10-1 win. Matt Phillippe led the way, three goals and two assists for five points. Nick Stevens chipped in four points. Hayden Johnson had three assists. That happens to be the Little Falls Flyers' first line this evening. Uh, Dane Kucher, the winning goaltender, was 10 of 11, and uh, Netarozic, Joe Netarozic, the sophomore, was 56 of 66. And for Little Falls, they now have a record against Prairie Center that dates back to 2003-2004 of 25 and one. Well, speaking of 25, we're 25 minutes away from the puck drop of this game, and we're going to take our first break. When we come back, we'll talk with both head coaches. We'll talk with Chad Wormer from the North Stars of Prairie Center, followed up with Tony Kucher from the Little Falls Flyers. It is section playoff hockey tonight here on Flyer Media Productions, Q92 and FallsRadio.com. Hilmerson Collision Center, they understand that when you've been in an accident, it can be a stressful time. That's why they minimize the confusion and inconvenience by handling the insurance claim for you. The experts at Hilmerson Collision Center take personal pride in providing a quality repair with quality service. For collision repair from a name you can trust, remember Hilmerson Collision Center. Hilmerson Collision Center is looking for full-time auto body technicians. Experience preferred. will train. Stop in today. I'm Katie Jackson, the home mortgage specialist for Pine Country Bank. I'm Cheryl Plouffe, and I'm the loan processor. 
We try to make the mortgage process as easy as we can. We will take an application over the phone. We will take an application in person, and we communicate with the borrowers in any way that they choose to communicate. Sometimes that might be email, sometimes that might be a text message, and sometimes that's over the phone, sometimes that's in person. We're very flexible, and we'll work with each customer as to whatever's convenient for them. It's great to be a part of a hometown bank and offer the services that we can to help people get into their dream home. We had a client that came in about two weeks before Christmas and wanted to be in their new home before Christmas, and we were able to obtain that because of our hometown service. Pine Country Bank is your hometown bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. Physical therapy provides care for individuals with pain, stiffness, weakness, and treatment specifically designed for post-surgical rehabilitation. The physical therapists at Advanced Physical Therapy in Little Falls are highly trained with doctorate degrees in physical therapy and have the experience and expertise to provide you with the most effective techniques and treatments to enhance your recovery and optimize function. Advanced Physical Therapy is a locally owned physical therapy center on the river in downtown Little Falls. For more information, visit advancedphysicaltherapymn.com. Welcome back to the pregame show. I'm now joined with the head hockey coach of the Prairie Center North Stars, that being Chad Worman. And Chad, we saw you about a month ago here in a 10 1 loss. We'll talk about the game coming up tonight, but I guess let's kind of recap the season since then. And unfortunately, I know that you guys uh, had to go through the COVID 19 protocol. I guess, how did that go after you and I had a chance to talk about it and said, hey, things have been good so far? Yeah, well, that's just how it works, right? I mean, tomorrow's the day, you never know what's going to go on. So, uh, we found out on Monday that we uh, we had had a case and and uh, we shut it down for ten days and and we were back again and we you know you play one day after you come back and um, you know the kids handled it well. We met a few times uh, online, you know, did some Zoom meetings with the boys and they uh, they got some workouts and as far as I know they did them. So um, yeah, the kids handled it really well. You know, for Little Falls, unfortunately, they had to do the same yep. thing and they really kind of struggled a little bit to get going at least after that ten days. How about you guys? How did you guys do after that? Well, no doubt, right? I mean, you play a game. We had one practice, I think, and then we play a game uh, up in Wadena there, and, you know, it, it's just it's not the same. You know, I mean, you haven't had your week or whatever or scrimmage or nothing going on. So certainly the hands and, the, you know, some of the, the skating and, the, and the, you know, the lungs don't come back right away. You know, it's, it's just different than being on the ice. So I think our kids did well, but uh, definitely there was an adjustment for that next week. You know, I would say at least a week it kind of took you, so. Seeds came out on Sunday, and then, of course, uh, we learned on Monday a couple of teams that weren't able to play. We kind of knew River Lakes ones if they weren't going to get seeded. But then your opponent, Wadena Deer Creek, then, unfortunately, same situation where they had somebody not on their team, but on a team they, they had played, had some contacts. So that put, took them out. How tough was that, I guess, for you guys not to get a chance to play a game before tonight? Well, you know, first of all, we just feel we feel terrible for Scott Woods and, and Jason Murray and, and uh, you know, Wadena up there. They, they, they do a great job, and they've got some seniors that are, that, you know, they're just a tough way to end, you know, and you don't ask that for anybody. Uh, our boys were looking forward to it, you know what I mean? We're, Wadena and Prairie Center are old rivals. I mean, we, we looked forward to that game a lot. Um, you know, I think our guys realized it, too. You know, we had, we had a practice Monday. We're just getting ready to watch film, and all of a sudden I get a phone call from my AD, and he says, no game tomorrow. And it was just, there was sort of this, like this quick moment of, hey, we're moving on in the locker room, and then immediately went to sort of a somber, like, we don't get to play tomorrow night, you know, and it just comes that quick. And so I think our guys realized, and, you know, we had good practice the rest of the week, and, and uh, we'll see what happens tonight. Tonight you take on the Flyers, and, of course, they are the number one seed, and you obviously are the ninth seed, and, and Little Falls uh, knows the history of a 9-1 because they actually had a 9-1 loss here about 10 years ago against Apollo so that is on their minds a little bit and maybe it'll be on your minds your guys's minds too but I guess looking at this game tonight and going back from game number one that you played what are some of the things that you are definitely going to have to maybe change from what you did here about a month ago to tonight yeah you know what we played pretty well against those guys against Little Falls here a month ago when we played um I thought our goalie played well and and, and we uh we packed it in pretty tight. You know, we're, we're going to try to change. We're just going to try to be more responsible for our guys down low. You know, Little Falls likes to be down low in the zone. It seemed like to us in watching our films. And so 
we'll, we'll try to be more responsible man on man down there. Um, and we're going to have to try to get some, we're going to try to get some opportunities to, to score some goals, you know, so we've got a few things in place here. We're going to try to stretch it out coming out, but, um, but other than that, we're going to have to just be more responsible down low. Got to ask the keys to the game then. So being responsible down low is one. What are some of the other keys to the game tonight? Well, I think going with an open mind, you know, we've been trying to preach to our guys that this is a new season and, you know, our record was not very good this year, but I think the boys have come a long way and, and uh, they're great kids and, and they're working hard. And so put a smile on your face and go play and see what happens. You know, we, we've used the examples here the last couple of days that, you know, in section eight, double a, the one eight and the two seven games, both went to overtime uh, last night. So these things can happen in the playoffs. You know, you just got to go play and play as hard as you can and let the chips fall. Coach, as always, good to see you. Good luck tonight. Thanks, James. Appreciate all your time. Once again, that's the head hockey coach of the Prairie Center North Stars. That is Chad Werman. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk with the head coach of the Flyers, that being Tony Kuchar. You're listening to Flyer Hockey on Q92, FallsRadio.com, and watching on Flyer Media Productions. When you need your garbage removed, call Bob Lemire Roll-Off and Refuse in Little Falls. Locally owned and operated, Bob Lemire Roll-Off and Refuse is ready to pick up your garbage and save you money. No administrative fees, no contracts. Show. They offer both commercial and residential service. Whether you need a roll-off, dump, or can, call them today at 320-632-5212. That's 632-5212. Bob Lemire Roll-Off and Refuge in Little Falls. Living and working with you in your community. Are you in the mood for remodeling your floors? We check floors and more. Have top brands of carpeting, hardwood, laminate, tile, rugs, blinds, and more. If you're not able to come in to We Check Floors and More, they'll come to you with the latest and newest styles of flooring. We Check Floors and More are the flooring experts. Call today for a free estimate and consultation. 632-4201 or stop into their showroom, which is at 50 East Broadway in Little Falls. Let them floor you, let them floor you. We Check Floors and More. All good things come in threes. The versatile John Deere 3025E compact utility tractor offers extra muscle to complete projects like land clearing, lifting hay bales, and moving large loads of rock. Own a 3025E from Midwest Machinery for as low as $139 a month. Plus, get a $250 implement bonus when you purchase two or more qualifying attachments with your 3025E purchase. Schedule a test drive at Midwest Machinery in Little Falls or online at MidwestMachineryCO.com. Monthly payments based on 20% down with 0% for 84 months. Implement tax and delivery charges with increased monthly payments. Subject to approval for John Deere Financial. When suddenly your car doesn't look like it should after an accident, it's nice to know where to go. In Little Falls, Peterson Body Shop is known for their quality workmanship and reputation for reasonable rates. From body repairs to glass installation to loaner cars when work is being performed, Peterson Body Shop has been bringing quality service in the Little Falls area since 1963. Give them a call at 632-6156. Peterson Body Shop, Highway 27 West, Little Falls. Your best decision after a collision. Just ask your neighbors. Welcome back to the pregame show. I'm now joined with the head hockey coach of the Little Falls Flyers, that being Tony Kucher, and our coach's interview is being brought to you by Hilmerson Collision Center in Little Falls. Coach, well, you're here at playoff time it is tonight. We'll get to that in just a moment, but let's uh, recap, I guess, the end of the season. Uh, you were supposed to play a game against River Lakes. That obviously didn't happen, and then you played a game against Warroad on the road and lost 3-1, to one, your comments. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a great trip. You know, it's a long trip, uh, bus trip up there. Um, they're an excellent team. Uh, we knew coming into the game, uh, we got up on them one, nothing, uh, you know, they dominated the first probably eight minutes of the game until we, you know, just kind of calmed down, got things figured out, figured out what they were going to do and how good they were. And, uh, then we kind of, we st steadily got better as the game went on, had chances to, uh, um, you know, to score, they, they were very good, uh, in defensively. Uh, but we had a, a couple breakaways, a couple point-blank shots, uh, just didn't get it in the back of the net. Um, we killed off a five-minute penalty. of uh, Carter Rothalt uh, had, a, had a boarding penalty five-minute, and he actually got ejected out of the game for it. Uh, but we killed that off all five minutes, and then we got another penalty right away, uh, which uh, was a questionable call. But it, it was, you know, you just... 
you just go and take it and and uh and then they scored on that uh, power play to make it 1-1 and and uh but we still hung in there they did some things that we hadn't seen another team do on some face-offs and stuff um and they were very good uh, uh they were just a very well disciplined team and and very skilled so but uh we 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 hung in there and uh, we we uh thought we could have uh you know scored some goals and made it a you know a, a 3 to 2 game or or a 3 3 game we had some power plays in uh in the third period and uh got some shots but just just not quality shots on that but uh, it was a good good trip uh, to end the season. They had the kids had to work extremely hard. Um, even I think despite uh, the 3-1, I think we were still happy as a team and as a coaching staff that we went up there uh, with some adversity. Um, played an early game, bus trip, and uh, played hard. And, and uh, you know we gave up I think 35 shots. So it was 35-22 or something like that. So uh, yeah, it was it was a great game uh, to end the season on, uh, win or lose. Let's talk about the season is over, the regular season, uh, the most unusual season for any coach in, in, in any sport whatsoever. But I guess let's assess the season, I guess, finishing out the year, 10 wins, 4 losses, and a tie. I guess if you had to put a grade on the season, uh, what would you put that grade as? Well, it was uh, it was it definitely uh, was a weird season. I mean, we had some games that uh, – we couldn't play early on. We juggled it around and so we could play some other games. We ended up going to Wilmer at one point when we were supposed to play a game and uh, had chances to, at the end to play games and chose not to. Just the fact that uh, the quarantine was just out there and, and we wanted just to kind of finish with War Road and, and we didn't want to play any back-to-back -back games or anything like that. So, um, you know, some of the highs that that we had, I thought, uh, I thought the Denfeld game for us, uh, at least for me, I, th I was really pleased with the, how the kids worked hard, and it was a good quality win for us. Um, I thought the Sartell game was a, a good quality win for us. Um, so there's a couple of wins in there that uh, we were very happy with, uh, along with the Fergus Falls game here. Uh, close games, battle games, and that's what uh, we had to have the whole season. But uh, yeah, and then to get quarantined uh, towards the end, having to to, to try to battle back after one day of practice, um, losing uh, the two in a row to uh, Northern Lakes and to Dodge County was definitely probably the low part of the, with the quarantine and, and not that we lost to the team, but just the, the way the whole thing kind of went down. Um, so we're, we're sitting at playoffs now. I, I think we, if, if you were to ask, I think we're, I mean, we could have played some better games. We could have, uh, we had some great games. So I would think somewhere in a B, B plus, um, is what I kind of look at it, uh, depending on how we finish the season here. Uh, but you get new grades now. So everybody's 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, it was probably, what, 10 years ago maybe or so that uh, the number one seed Little Falls Flyers lost to the number nine seed Apollo Eagles uh, in a game right here in Exchange Arena. So a little different circumstances uh, at, at this time right now. But uh, as you well know in the playoffs, anybody gets a hot goaltender, or a cold goaltender, or a team that can't score, and a team that can score just at will. So um, we did quite well against uh, Prairie Center last time, so we're, uh, we're hoping that uh, we just continue tonight. Let's talk about the playoffs. The seedings were on Sunday. You seeded all 10 teams, and then we found out there were two teams that weren't able to play because of COVID protocol issues. Yeah, it was too bad. I mean, it was a very tough situation for River Lakes. Uh, they were either going to be the seventh seed or the sixth seed. Uh, seventh seed, uh, meaning that their season was going to be done because their quarantine period was after the Tuesday play-in game, which the seventh seed plays the ten seed. Um, so that happened uh, when the seed came out. They were the seventh seed, so they automatically uh, were done for the season. Um, and then with Wadena, uh, they played a team that had uh, some COVID uh, positives. Um, that they had played within a short period of time uh, from the playoff time. So they were uh, automatically uh, quarantined at that time, which was, I'm sure they're I, I just more familiar with Wadena and Scott Woods and Coach Murray uh, with their, uh, what they've been trying to do in Wadena and uh, more than I, more so in, in River Lakes, because River Lakes had some seniors also that I feel terrible about. Uh, but uh, I feel really bad for uh, a team that gets quarantined, and there's probably maybe 
you know, 14 to 20 teams that probably got quarantined with the boys and girls side uh, that could not play in the playoffs. But, uh, you know, Scott and, and Murray uh, uh, had senior boys. Um, and, it, you know, you just put yourself into that situation if that would have happened to Dane and I. Or, and uh, it would have been a tough tough way to go down. I know that uh, Mankato East also went down. They were the number two seed, I think, playing the 10 seed. And uh, and they had they got to play with their JV team, which uh, they ended up losing three to one. But uh, there was a, a Twitter uh, message out from the coach, uh, just uh, just a sad, just the way it goes down, and not being able to uh, see your team and and have a Zoom meeting and tell the tell the team that they're done. So, which uh, nobody's out of the woods yet um, right now. So I mean, it could happen at any time. Uh, you could have we get, we still got a couple kids that are in school right now. Uh, it happens all the time that somebody comes down with it, they go back to tracing, and uh, that's a it just it turns out to be a sad deal for that individual. So hopefully nobody else uh, in the state uh, will get this uh, quarantine, and and hopefully we'll have a state tournament. And somebody asked me the other day what happens in the state tournament. It's just a forfeit game, and you just keep moving on. Uh, right now in the state tournament, it's just when you're when you lose, you're done. There's no consolation side. There's no, you know, consolation championship. There's no third place game. So, um, but uh, a tough tough deal uh, with uh, with our section that we lost two teams. Yeah, it's uh, first of all you got to win three games to get the state, but then you also have to avoid any kind of COVID issues also to get that chance to go to state. And your your trip to state starts tonight as you take on the Prairie Center North Stars. We've played them before here at a ten one win. I guess keys to the game tonight to get that win and continue on to the playoffs. Well, I think uh, the keys of the game is I, I think we we want to make sure that our kids work hard. Um, last time we played them, it was probably a, about a period and a half, and then it was kind of a lull there with uh, with what went on and, and running time in the third. And we just want to continue to play hard and move the puck and and uh, and and be excited to play. Um, and then I th I still think our our power play needs. I mean, I don't think that last time we played them we had too many power play opportunities but if we do uh, we need to get this figured out and it, it happens in a game we've been working very hard in practice uh, uh, with our power play and and uh, we're hoping that it comes alive tonight uh, um, it's very tough in, in practice to, to go against your own players that know exactly what you're doing on the power play so they cheat a little bit and and, uh, and it's very difficult but uh, I think power play and, and I think uh, one thing that we talk a lot about at the end of the year is face-offs um, you know, we I went to the girls' game last night. Uh, Ten seconds left. They, Alexandria had a face-off in in uh, Brainerd's uh, Little Falls zone. Uh, you know, the puck went behind the net uh, right off the face-off. It's almost right uh, in front, and they score with one second left in the game. So, um, face-offs are huge and important. So. Um, I think we've been working also on on plays off our face off and just getting the kids to do things and and think about that face off because it could come back to haunt you. So um, I think the three keys I think uh, special teams face offs, uh, power play and penalty kill, and then just getting out and, and work hard. It's been a while since we played since uh, you know almost a week. So. Uh, we need to get out there and, and uh, score some goals. I mean, that's been our MO this year, all year, uh, in close games all the time. We're out shooting somebody and, and just really not getting pucks to the net. All right, Coach, good luck tonight. We'll talk to you after the game. Thank you very much, James. Once again, that's the head hockey coach of Little Falls Flyers. That is Tony Kucher. Our coach's interview has been brought to you by Hillerson Collision Center in Little Falls. When we come back, we'll have the starting goaltenders, Little Falls Prairie Center Playoff Hockey, up next on Flyer Media Productions, Q92 and fallsradio.com. Have you been to Rudolph Auto Solutions yet? Rudolph Auto Solutions is your complete auto solution. From a state-of-the-art service department and detailing department to a great selection of new and used vehicles. Certified used, that is. And if we don't have it, we'll find it. That's my promise to you. Clean up, fix up, or trade up, we are your auto solution. Stop in and see us today, Rudolph Auto Solutions, at the intersection of Highway 27 and Highway 10 in Little Falls, or check us out online at RudolphAutoSolutions.net. Fleet Supply True Value in Little Falls has everything you need for all your outdoor and indoor projects. They have a great selection of tools, kitchen, pet, and paint supplies, footwear, and so much more. Also, check out their great monthly bargains with tons of in-store savings. Fleet Supply True Value, your complete farm and home store. 
located at 1800 First Avenue North in Little Falls. Behind every project is a true value. Ron's Oil and Propane is a locally owned family business that provides superior fuel for farms, homes, and businesses. The Shaper's additive Ron's use will give you the edge for performance and power. Ron's Oil and Propane serves Little Falls, Staples, and Motley area. No hidden fees or charges, just great fuel. Experienced drivers and outstanding customer service. Always competitively priced. Ron's Oil and Propane, 877-256-3680. Little Falls students are encouraging each other to rise up for mental health. RISE stands for Recognize Our Feelings, Inform Others, Save Time for You, and Exercise Good Habits. Five great tips for teens to practice self-care for mental health are carving out time every day for our own self-care, exercising, getting restful sleep, talking with your friends, and doing something for someone else. Practicing self-care, interacting with our friends, and helping others are great ways we can all rise up for mental health. All right, hockey fans, welcome back to the Exchange Arena. James Hershey along with Jamie Pettit. About five minutes away or so from puck drop of this Section 6A quarterfinal game as the number one seed Little Falls Flyers taking on the nine seed Prairie Center. And Jamie, there are three other games going on in the quarterfinals tonight at Section 6A. In the top half of the bracket, number four, Sartell, will host number five, St. Cloud Cathedral. Sartell beat St. Cloud Cathedral a week ago Thursday in Sartell by a score of eight to one. The Sabres have won four consecutive games. They've outscored their opponents 34 to two, and Hayden Walters is on a tear for the Sartell Sabres. He's got eight goals and four assists for 12 points in his last three games. So a tough assignment for St. Cloud Cathedral as they are in Sartell tonight. The Cathedral Crusaders have won four of the last five Section 6A championships, of course, two seasons ago, they won the Class A state championship. Last year, they were third place at the Class A state tournament. But tonight, the Crusaders, Derek Brown's St. Cloud Cathedral Crusaders are underdogs to Ryan Hacker's Sartell Sabres. You know, I'm gonna put you on the spot and you can look at this up, but when is the last time St. Cloud has actually played a road game? In section playoffs? Yes. My guess is they haven't. I don't think this might be the first time. I don't believe they have. No buses necessary for St. Cloud Cathedral because the semifinals and the finals are at the MAC in St. Cloud. That will not be the case this season as it's sight of the high seed throughout the Section 6A playoffs. Of course, that is on the upper half of the bracket, and then you have the uh, lower half of the bracket. The Alexandria Cardinals are the three seed, Morris Benson the six seed. Morris Benson's won 12 of their last 13 games. Alexandria has lost four of their last five. Uh, Last season, Alexandria beat Morris Benson seven to one in the section 6A quarterfinals. So that's the game that people might be looking at to see, could there be an upset? Could Morris Benson beat Alexandria on Cardinal ice? Uh, with the Alexandria Cardinals as the three seed, Morris Benson the six seed. And then the final game in the bottom half of the bracket is the Fergus Falls Otters and the Breckenridge Wapaton Blades. Breckenridge Wapaton advanced to the Section 6A quarterfinals due to the COVID forfeit from River Lakes. River Lakes was not eligible to play on Tuesday night, so Breckenridge Wapaton advances to play the Fergus Falls Otters, seed at number two, and the Otters this season, 13 wins and three losses, of course, one of those three losses to the Little Falls Flyers on March 8th, on Monday night, by a score of 4-3. to three. So those are the other games going on in the section tonight. And, of course, uh, there were a lot of games last night played. And coming up in intermission number one and intermission number two, we'll run down some of the scores of that and also some of the other games going on tonight, too. Let's get uh, our game at hand here, Prairie Center and Little Falls and uh, obviously here's a team Prairie Center that uh, is just trying to come out here and do whatever they can whatsoever they as head coach uh, Chad Warner said in the pregame show they did play well at the beginning of that game a month ago when the Flyers were unable to score until almost the nine minute mark yeah Little Falls beat Prairie Center on February 18th 10 to 1 but the North Stars have not won a game since January 28th, a 5-2 win against Breckenridge Wapaton. The only other win this season for Prairie Center was on January 15th. They beat Wadena Deer Creek 6-3. From the Little Falls Flyers side, 
The Flyers have only played five games in 26 days. That is not a lot of hockey over a 26 game stretch, but there are five opponents during that stretch. They had Northern Lakes, a 4-2 loss. Northern Lakes is number two in Section 5A. They had a 3-2 loss to Dodge County. Dodge County, the number one seed in Section 1A. A 3-2 win against Duluth Denfeld. Denfeld, the number two seed in 7A. A 4-3 win against the Fergus Falls Otters, the number two seed in Section 6A. And then the 3-1 loss to War Road last Saturday. And the War Road Warriors are the number one seed in Section 8A. So five games in 26 days, but five quality opponents. Quality opponents. The other thing, Jamie, too, that you got to think about is that at least they're not going to be tired from playing a, a lot of games no. in a short amount of period, which actually was supposed to be what was supposed to happen in the last couple of weeks of the season. They're supposed to have six games in that last two yeah. weeks. Yes, the way the schedule was set up, they were allowed to play three games the last the last two weeks of the season to total six, but it didn't work out for the Flyers because of the virus. All right, let's get the starting goaltenders for tonight's game. Here's Jamie Pettit. The Prairie Center North Stars are 2-12-1. Chad Werman's their head coach. He's in his fifth season. Joe Nederosic, the sophomore, starts in goal. He's played all the minutes for the North Stars this season. 779, a 6.5 goals against average. Save percentage of 85.3%. For the Little Falls Flyers, 10 wins, four losses, and a tie. Tony Kuchar's in his 28th season behind the Little Falls Flyers bench. He's got 422 career wins. Dane Kuchar, Tony Kuchar's son, the senior, will start in goal. Kuchar starts his 67th consecutive game for the Flyers. He's got nine career shutouts. This year, 762 minutes, a 2.3 goals against average, save percentage of 91%, and he does have a shutout. That was against Morris Benson on January 22nd. Little Falls is 10-4-1, Prairie Center 2-12-1. Quarterfinals from the Exchange Arena in Little Falls. Let's take our final break. When we come back, we drop the puck on the playoffs. Little Falls Prairie Center up next on Flyer Media Productions, Q92 and FallsRadio.com. Center Winter and Company is a regional independent CPA firm dedicated to serving clients with professionalism and integrity. The firm's professional staff's attention to detail and personal touch promote excellent working relationships with their clients. The firm focuses on serving accounting, tax, and business consulting needs of their business, individual, not-for-profit, and governmental clients. Slender, Winter & Company in Albany, St. Cloud, Monticello, Maple Lake in their new location in Little Falls next to the dam. Providing high-quality value, added professional service since 1964. For excellence in auto body repair, there's only one place to go, Hilmerson Collision Center. At Hilmerson Collision Center, they take personal pride in all of their work. They minimize the confusion and inconvenience by working directly with the insurance company and handle the claims for you. For collision repair from a name you can trust, call Hilmerson Collision Center. They specialize in collision repair. That's why it's part of their name. Make your only choice for quality repair, Hilmerson Collision Center. I've got a math question for you. When you add tolerance, subtract prejudice, and multiply efforts to treat one another with respect, what do you get? Less division. And school sports have it down to a science. Looking for an example of what can happen when we realize there's more that unites us than divides us? Look no further than high school sports in Minnesota. This message presented by the Minnesota State High School League and the Minnesota Interscholastic Activities Administrators Association. If it's getting mighty hungry, well, the best in the country is Pizza Ranch. The Pizza Ranch in Little Falls now has boneless and traditional wings for pickup or delivery only. Try one of their five sauces only at the Pizza Ranch in Little Falls. It's where life tastes better, surround them up and head her down to Pizza Ranch. Whoa, that's good. All right, hockey fans, playoff hockey just about ready to get underway here tonight. And with our final comments of the pregame show, here's Jamie Pennant. This is the ninth time the Little Falls Flyers have been seeded number one for the section playoffs. They've been to the state tournament six times. Overall within the section, 20 of 27 times the number one seed has advanced 
to the state tournament. Little Falls will need to win three in a row to get to the state tournament for the seventh time in team history. And uh, it's not an easy road, but at least it's a road at home the entire way. That's right, sight of the high seed. We're not going to the MAC on Tuesday night for the semifinals. If the Flyers win, we'll be back in the same broadcast location. We got the best seats in the house for the next three games as so as long as the Flyers keep winning. We shall soon see. We All have right. gold judges tonight. Yes, we, we do. We have gold judges. It's playoff time. We have gold judges. I think we got Steve Murad behind the one yep. goal and Dave Stump behind Dave, the other one. Dave Stump, goaltender parent. There you go. All right, pucks down. We're underway with high school hockey playoffs here on Q92FallsRadio.com and streaming online. As also on Flyer Media Productions. As the Flyers have it behind their own net to start things off. Majorly tries to tip it up to Hayden Johnson, that first line, and it'll be a Polipnik that'll dump it in deep as the second line out there quickly for the Prairie Center North Stars. Out at center ice, it's dumped in here now by Johnson. Going back to pick up the loose puck this time is Fletcher. He'll try to skate it up to center ice, unable to do so there as Steven slows it down. Now it's Kaczynski, Haugesson centering a pass out, shot there, score by Matt Philippi. And Matt Philippi, if there's a kid I guess that is kind of the goal scorer of this team, it's him because Matt Philippi has just scored goal number 18 of the season and just a mere 41 seconds in, Jamie, it's one nothing. And Robbie Kaczynski, Helgeson comes off the flyer bench on a line change. Philippi didn't get all of it, but he got enough of it. It kind of knuckled over the shoulder of Netarozic in the North Star net, just 41 seconds into the first period, and the Flyers have a one nothing lead, 18th of the season for Matt Philippi. I think he had the lob wedge on that yes. since we're almost in golf season yeah. now. It's like we're playing hockey almost the end of, April, uh, the end of March here. Stevens will get the other assist, as you heard. Kaczynski Halgus into the goal by Philippi is 18th of the year, and it's 1-0. So a quick start here for the Flyers compared to the last time these two teams played, where it took almost nine minutes, but the same guy that scored the first goal in that game was Matt Philippi, and he scored the one here tonight. And Matt Philippi scored the only goal for Little Falls last Saturday in the 3-1 loss to War Road. Yeah, I think we found a goal score. Now we just need a few more. Here's an opportunity now. Backhand attempt there. Nedorosic with the save there as that backhand off the stick there of Gunnar Gustafsson. Comes back out to center ice. Gustafsson going to glove it down. He'll flip it in. He'll go off on a change. Getting back there first there this time and carrying it out. This is Hoffman. Hoffman gets it to center ice. Got it on the tape there of Swanson. Swanson moves it across the flyer line and then had it taken away there by Colton Johnson. He lost it. Turnaround shot taken there by Swanson. Fanned on back the other way. Come the Flyers now. Two on two across the line. Matt Cooper with a shot. Save made. Rebound loose to the side of the net there. As an opportunity that time there. That was Jake Tchaikovsky. And it'll be played back down in front of the netminder, Dane Kucher, who will play it away over to Jake. Tchaikovsky now gives it back to Moore. Now to Colton Johnson. 14.49 to go here in the first. one nothing Little Falls. That stretch pass didn't work. And we got an icing call on Little Falls. Flyers line chart tonight. Nick Stevens centers Matt Phillippe and Hayden Johnson. Gunnar Gustafson centers the second line with Gabe Hirsch on the left. Robbie kaczynski Helgeson on the right. Matthew Cooper is the third line center. Tower Morrison on the left. Jake Tchaikovsky on the right. Six defensemen for the Flyers. Joe Majerly, George Moore, Marshall Inez, Colton Johnson, Colin Cray, and Ben Rexted. Carter Othout, the freshman, is ineligible to play tonight. Had a checking from behind and a game misconduct against Warroad. If the Flyers Flyers win, he'll be back in the lineup on Tuesday night. Here's Cray out to center ice, his pass over the stick of Hayden Johnson, goes into the corner to the left of Nedorozic. A couple of players collide in that corner. Stevens on the uh, receiving end, or actually the hitting end that time of John Williams, and it comes back out to center ice. Picked up here now by Cray, he'll pass it over. Majerly, his pass intercepted at the North Star blue line, and Majerly takes it right back. Comes in now, a little wrist shot, and that one handcuffed the net minor net of He got a piece of it, and it goes into the corner. Picked up here by Stevens. Now back give and go to Philippi, trying to get it back to Stevens. Stevens now gathers it once again in the circle, trying to pass over to Hayden Johnson. Intercepted, however, there, and played out to center ice here by the North Stars as they'll dump it in and go off on a change. 13.45 to go in the opening period. one nothing Little Falls. Cray once again out to center. Now Hayden Johnson will move it up to the North Star line. North Stars will dump it back out to center ice. That neutralized played here by Brady Klein. He'll dump, he'll chase after it. 
And he almost got there first, but just tipped away at the last second there by George Moore. Klein now plays it back deep into the corner. Going after the puck is Hoffman. Hoffman pushed up along the boards there with Cray, and coming out of it now is Stevens. Nick Stevens at center ice, fires it into the corner. They'll chase after it. Stars get there first. They play it out to center ice. Marshall and Ez trying to move it back into the zone again, and it's carried out here by Lambrecht, and Lambrecht will dump it down to the flyer zone. There'll be no icing there. 13 minutes to go in the opening period. 1-0 our score. The 18th of the season by Matt Phillippe, the lone goal so far here in this game. Played in the corner once again to the left, of Netta Rosick. Now a chance behind the net there as it was sent out by Gabe Hirsch. Nobody home, trying to keep it in at the right point was Maury does, gets it back to Hirsch. Little give and go, that shot just wide there by Kaczynski Algeson. As Hirsch had it on that end wall, has it again now, passes it out. He's got Gunnar Gustafson, shoots, he scores! And Gunnar Gustafson makes it 2 nothing on a nifty pass by Gabe Hirsch, and that goal for Gunnar Gustafson is his sixth of the year. Flyers did a good job of keeping the puck in along the left side. Kaczynski Helgeson went down to Hirsch, Hirsch to Gustafson, and Gustafson fires it into the back of the North Star net to give the Little Falls Flyers a 2 0 lead. And for Gunnar Gustafson, it's his sixth of the season. Gunnar had only scored two goals in his last six games, but he's got the second goal of the night for the Little Falls Flyers. Flyers, number 15, Gunnar Gustafson with an assist to number nine, Gabe Hirsch. Hirsch will get the lone assist. Gunnar Gustafson, as you mentioned, his sixth goal of the season. It's 2 0 Flyers. And here comes Tower Morrison, left wing side, still coming in. Tries to get it back to Cooper, who's tucked in a little bit too deep there. And he'll be played behind the net now to Tower Morrison. Trying to send it out to Matthew Cooper. Cooper taking off his skates. Play continues on. Now in the corner. Played to the line, not out. Held in there by Majority. Intercepted here by the North Stars. And they'll flip it out to center ice. Colton Johnson goes back to play it. 2 0 Little Falls. Inside of 12 minutes to go here in the first. This gets through everyone, but no icing. Going back first to get it this time will be Dieters. Trying to avoid the check there of Morrison. Puck comes out now in the high slot. Shot taken there by Majerly. That one just wide. Carried off the back wall. Then a tough angle shot there by Stevens. And Neta Rosick makes the save and holds on to the 11.36 to go in the first. Little Falls 2, Prairie Center nothing. And the Flyers lead 2 nothing because of their first goal was scored at 41 seconds of the first period. Philippi is 18th of the season. First assist, Kaczynski Helgeson. Second assist, Stevens. Then at 4.26 of period one, Little Falls takes a 2 nothing lead. Gustafson, sixth of the season. First assist, Hirsch. Second assist, Robbie Kaczynski Helgeson. Puck in the circle now, unable to clear it out yet on the first attempt. Now they do on the second attempt. Out to center ice, Prairie Center has it. Puck picked up here by Sorensen. Throws it into the flyer zone. Klein has it now. Klein tries to play it back to the line, intercepted by Philippi, held in now at the right point there that time by Hoffman, and it plays in the corner. Flyers control now, this is Moore with it. Flips it out to center ice, and here's a chance coming in. Onside, Hayden Johnson, little pass back there, shot taken by Philippi, and then Rosa got a piece of that one. And it goes into the netting out of play. Burst of speed for the Little Falls Flyers, and Metarozic, I think, got enough of it to uh, fend off the Flyers and uh, keep it 2 0 in the Little Falls Flyers' favor. We had the North Stars line chart earlier this week from the head coach, Chad Werman, and we asked him before the game, is there any changes to the line chart that you provided to us? And he said, yes. Eli Fletcher's going to play defense and Ethan Hoffman's gonna move up left wing first line. So we're gonna see at least here to start the game, Eli Fletcher, the sophomore, the leading scorer for the North Stars playing defense. Yeah, uh, Eli Fletcher, 20 points coming in, 15 goals, five assists. He's got 94 points as a sophomore. If you look on the other side, Matt Phillippe coming in as a sophomore, 75 points coming into today's game. Now he's got 76 with the goal. So Eli Fletcher, Definitely somebody to watch out for. We didn't see much of him in the game a month ago. He really was not much of a factor at all. Oh, I'm thinking they're going to try to use him, obviously, as more of an offensive force from the defensive side from the North Stars to kind of mix it up a little bit and see if they can catch the Flyers off guard. Kaczynski Helgeson, quick pass out there to Hirsch, and his shot just went wide as the Flyers are dominating right now behind the net, getting good net presence behind uh, the net miner, Netta Rosick, and getting some good passes out in the low slot. Played back out to center ice now. Moved ahead here. This is Swanson, right wing side. Wrist shot, first glove save made of the night for Dane Kuchar, and he will hold on as that is the first shot 
of the night for Prairie Center, seven minutes and four seconds into this game. Well, shots favor the Little Falls Flyers, seven to one. Seamless transition so far for the Flyers through the neutral zone. They spent a lot of time in the North Stars end of the ice and Prairie Center's gonna have to find a way to slow up the Little Falls Flyers as they're just gonna roll three lines throughout this game. Flyers lead two nothing on goal scored by Philippi and Gustafson. Tower Morrison at center ice. He'll come across the North Star blue line. Puts on the brakes, gets it down low. Kachin, I made mean, that uh, uh, Chukowski with a shot. It's a mouthful. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say Kachinski, but it was yeah. Kachowski. Now once, once again, this is more with it. We won't make you spell it. Thanks, thanks, appreciate it. Well, I could spell it here. I have it in front of me. So. Well, I'm saying without looking. Well, then I'd, I'd butcher that. Typically when you take, um, you know, you're in a spelling contest, you can't look. Oh, really? Yeah, that's okay. the way it works. <laughs> that's at least the way it was when I was in school. Hence the reason I probably was never in a spelling contest. Yeah, well. And uh, my kids would say that too. Yeah, Dad, probably a good thing you weren't. I'm glad to hear that. On the left wing side, shot taken there by Inez. And the save made there by Neta Rosic. Inside of nine minutes to go in the first, two nothing Little Falls. They've jumped out to an early lead here. Here's now Majerly moving in. Backhand attempt, clinks the top post. That crossbar there, an opportunity there. And Joe Majerly has kind of been quiet this year in the scoring column. Only one goal to show for, seven assists, but he nearly had his second of the season. Held in here by Philippi. Give and go now to Stevens in the circle. Trying to walk in, now Philippi gets it back down to Majerly. Majerly with a shot, screen there was Neta Rosic and he got a piece of that one. Comes back to the line, not out. Majerly able to keep it in. Stevens now in the right circle. Tied up there a little bit by Sorensen. Back now, quick shot taken there. Tipped in front, score! And I believe the shot was taken by Colton Johnson. And Philippi might have tipped that. Let's wait and see. Actually, it might have been Stevens that tipped it. As the Flyers work the puck back to the blue line, shot is taken, and I think Stevens tipped it last. Philippi may have got a piece of it before Stevens, but it was Stevens, the last Flyer, to touch it as Little Falls takes a 3 0 lead. Good job by the Flyers to provide a screen in front of Nederozic. Didn't have much of a chance as Stevens got his stick on it last. And for Stevens, his 11th of the season to make it 3 0. So Stevens with the goal, and we'll have to wait and see if, if Philippi gets an assist if he touched it or if it's just Colton Johnson. As we're waiting for the call down below here with 7.55 to go here in the first and a 3 0 lead for Little Falls. Nicholas Stevens with an assist to number 17, Colton Johnson, and an assist to number 19, Hayden Johnson. So they'll say it was not tipped at all by Philippi, so Colton and Hayden Johnson get the assist. And the goal scored by Stevens, and even strength goal is 11th of the season. And uh, that point, by the way, gives Stevens now 90 in his career. So he's slowly getting closer to that opportunity to be a 100-point clubber. As we have 21 of those so far, we're looking for number 22. Thomas Moore. Buck pick, oh, big hit down low that time as Kaczynski Helgeson on the receiving end of that hit. I'm trying to see who that jersey was actually did. That, actually, the hit there was uh, Lambrecht that put a good hit on it. Inside of seven minutes to go here in the first. And a 3-0 lead for Little Falls. Shots are not as much as they were in the last game in that after the end of the first period of the, the last game these two teams had, it was, uh, what was it, 20? It was 30-5 after one period of play. It's 11-1 right now but a 3-0 score. It was 4-0 after the first period in the first contest. This home run pass didn't connect there with Tchaikovsky, and we'll have an icing call coming up here on the Flyers. I was going to say Thomas Miller. Yeah, I, miss I knew what you were going to say. I, I misspoke yeah. as I was trying to make another note on my sheet. Thomas Miller became the 21st member of the Little Falls Flyers 100-point club in 2016, 42 goals, 60 assists for 102 points. So Miller the last member of the Flyers 100 point club as Stevens now is within 10. Yeah, he's getting closer. And of course, uh, they're gonna need a, a long playoff run here or a lot of scoring, I guess, in the next couple of games to for him to get there. Let's hope for the long playoff run. I like that, I like that idea. 6-10 to go here in the first. 
And 3-0 Little Falls leads in this 9-1 matchup. Flyers come in with the number one seed. And I guess I didn't ask, but was it pretty much a unanimous number one seed? Do you remember that, or did you see? I, I don't think there was any question that the Little Falls Flyers were the number one seed. Okay, just making sure on that. Here's Stevens, he's got a goal, he's looking for more. A little tip out in front, tried to help. That time was Hayden Johnson. Good opportunity there. This line is just buzzing once again. That's that top line of Phillippe, Stevens, and Johnson. In the corner now, Stevens back down to Inez. Marshall Inez with a blast, and that goes off a skate and goes off the end wall. Picked up here by Stevens. Stevens circling behind the net, trying to wrap around and wide open shot the goal on the backside, Hayden Johnson. And it's 4 0 Little Falls. As the Flyers get it back behind the net, Stevens controls the puck, did a good job of maintaining control of the puck, tried the wraparound, it ended up being a pass across to Hayden Johnson. We'd have to ask Stevens, were you trying to tuck it in around the goalpost or pass it across to Hayden Johnson? Regardless, it gives Little Falls a 4-0 lead as it came across to Hayden Johnson and he gently puts it into the back of the North Star net for a 4-0 flyer lead. I, I think we know what the answer would be. I, that was all a pass. <laughs> Hayden Johnson with an assist to number 33, Nicholas Stevens. Johnson. Don't you think? <laughs> I believe so. And he probably just said it like that, too. Well, I think that was a pass. A couple <laughs> weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, as I was making my way from the Zamboni room up to our, our broadcast location, Stevens stopped me, and there was a puck on the ground, and he says, I think you need a game puck. So he hands me this puck, he says, put it in your bag. And he said, you know what? If you catch up with me after the game, I'll sign it for you. <laughs> I did not find him after the game, so it was not signed. Do you have but that puck still? It's, at, it's in that broadcast bag right there, I believe. Okay. Well, maybe after the game, you'll have to get it signed. <laughs> 4.54 to go here in the first. 4 nothing, Little Falls. And uh, the nice positive thing about the four goals, Jamie, only 12 shots is their shot percentage is looking good tonight. Coming into the season, their shot per goal percentage is only 9.7%. That is not very good. Not the greatest. Uh, averaging over 40 shots a game. And tonight, 12 shots on goal, four past Netarozic. I think I can figure it out. That's 33% right That's now. That's good. Your math is sharp as ever tonight. Boy, you're in playoff form. Yeah, my math is good. My spelling, not no, so much. No, we won't. We'll disregard the spelling. Yeah, let's, let's never bring that up again, all right? 4.30 to go. That's why I'm in radio. I think I'd be in newspaper or something. It's supposed to spell check, though, for that now, right? Yes. Out at center ice. Or the editor will take care of it. Here's a shot by Colton Johnson wide of Mitterosic. Played off the back wall that time by Dieters. And this one gets all the way through. Going back to pick it up will be Colton Johnson. Johnson now throws it into the offensive player in that corner that time. Played around there. Not able to clear it out yet. And now it's finally picked up by the Flyers out to center. Here's Jake Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky, the senior, he tries to drive to the net. Oh, he got driven right into the net there. And it was, I believe, Dieters that took him into the net. And uh, Dieters going over to his uh, buddy and saying, hey, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to like take you out like that. Tchaikovsky looks like he might be shaken up, uh, taking his time, getting into position for the faceoff, which will be to the left of Netarozic. Little Falls takes a 4-0 lead with the fifth goal of the season from Hayden Johnson, single assist to Nick Stevens. Philippi, Gustafson, Stevens, and Hayden Johnson have scored the four goals for the Flyers here in period one. Shots favor Little Falls, 12-2. to two. Better make sure that pipe's not bent. He went in hard he on did. that thing. And look for Jake. Looks like he's okay. Six foot one, 185 pounds, and he rammed hard into that right goal post. He's out there, he's camped out in front right now. He's in the dirty zone looking for a goal here. Behind the net, now Tchaikovsky with it. Being tied up there once again. Tchaikovsky gets it back to George Moore. Moore at the left point. Moore now walks in on the left half wall, goes into the left corner, puts on the brakes, and then turns around with a quick shot. Ned Rosa got a piece of that one. Wraparound attempt goes off the tape there. Cooper shot there by Tchaikovsky, and that one just wide. Moore now plays it down low to Tchaikovsky. He's racing after it. Played back to Cray, holds it in. Shot towards the net. That one skipped into the corner. 
Puck down to oh. the side of that. It's underneath. Shot score. And Jake Tchaikovsky has scored his second goal of the season. So the hard work pays off for the senior. And he has his second of the year. And it's now 5-0 Flyers. Flyers dribble one in from the right point. Tower, Tower Morrison banked it off the side of the net. Then he got it to Tchaikovsky. And Tchaikovsky put it between the pads of Netarozic into the North Star net to give Little Falls a 5-0 lead. Flyers kept it alive at that right point. They got it deep. And Tower Morrison's able to kind of volleyball that puck off the net and eventually to Tchaikovsky. And Tchaikovsky scored for the Flyers. So Jake Tchaikovsky scores the goal. And here's an opportunity now, oh. and it's just off the tape there of Stevens as it kind of hopped over his stick. But Jake came back to the bench, and Tony Kuchar grabbed his stick right away. Tony then put it up, and he said he kept it down and says, this is what you need to do. Once you score, you raise your stick up, and you got to celebrate. <laughs> And no, then he patted him on the back and no, said, good job. It was a, a, a pretty stoic reaction from Jake Tchaikovsky. I think Jake's probably uh, still shaken up for getting ran yeah. into the goal yet. Here's another shot on net, saved there by Netarozic. And he will hold on as that shot taken by Hayden Johnson. You mentioned earlier that Joel Majerly, a captain for the Little Falls Flyers, has only scored one goal. Well, if you look at the Flyer defensive core, they primarily played five. They've only scored four goals this season. Those five defensemen have only scored four goals. Majerly, Moore, Anez, Colton Johnson, and Colin Cray. That's a low number of goals scored for a team that's won 10 games from their defensemen. That is, here's Kaczynski Helgeson. Gets it back now, this is Rex dead with it. One time shot there, falling down. Majerly, save made by Netarozic. He's lost his stick. As it's to the side right now, they pass it out in front now, coming in, a quick shot taken there, and that one goes up and out of play, and that'll at least retrieve the stick here for Renata Rosic with 2.03 to go in the first. Little Falls leading 5-0. It's been a tough period for Renata Rosic. He's 13 of 18, and without a goaltender stick, that made it even more difficult as the Flyers continue with more pressure in the offensive zone. It's been a good period for the Little Falls Flyers. They have not missed a beat. Yeah, this is maybe one of the best scoring outputs they've had all season. With uh, five goals in this first period, and the, the, like we mentioned before, when they played them a month ago, they scored four goals. Quick shot on net save made there by Neta Rosic. And that one taken by Ben Rexted. Rexted, the senior, fires another shot and heads up. That one goes over the safety yep. netting, and that almost took out a fan, which yep. looking in here tonight, a good yep. crowd in here tonight, probably at the maximum yep. capacity allowed for COVID. Well, of course, there's no more than 250 people in the building tonight. And they can be three feet apart now. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Kevin it's a Jordan, that's a separate discussion. Kevin Jordan actually told me that tonight. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's not like we can pack them in anymore, but. As you mentioned, 250 the max, but a good crowd here tonight. Nice to see a crowd at least for a hockey game. 124 to go here in the first. Five nothing is our score. Flyers lead in this one. Out to center ice, picked up here by Lambrick. He'll pass it over to the right wing side and trying to carry it in. This time is Fletcher. Fletcher turns around, fires a shot, fires that one wide. In the corner now, it's kept there by Ritter for a short time. And then Moore will play it out to center ice to Tchaikovsky, the goal scorer. Now that Tony showed him how to celebrate, now he needs yeah. to score another one. We'll have to talk about that in the post-game show. Remind me of that one. Well, Coach Kuchar can get excited. He's very excitable, and he wanted to see a little more reaction from Jake Tchaikovsky scoring the fifth goal for the Little Falls Flyers, his second you know, of the season. Something that also in that War Road game, only one goal was scored, but Dane Kuchar got an assist on that goal. He did. Dane Kuchar got an assist, as did Hayden Johnson on the Matt Phillippe goal. And Dane Kuchar was our Pizza Ranch player of the game, stopping 35 of 38, as we did a uh, kind of a remote broadcast yeah. last Saturday from uh, two different locations. Yeah. Actually, I thought it worked out pretty good. And uh, John Michael up in Warroad helped us out with the play-by-play, -play, and we were able to 
fill in the uh, intermissions, pre-game, post-game, had our post-game interview like we normally do. You were running the board at yeah. the Little Falls Studios, and I was in the press box in Wadena, yeah, it looked like watching you were, the game from my laptop. I thought you were at like a kindergarten <laughs> yeah. party or something, the way it was going. Apparently, if we do it again, when I'm not talking, I need to mute my phone. I would say so, okay. yeah, yeah, because it was uh, very interesting. I was like, Jamie, how many kids do you have at your house today? There was a Pee Wee B2 game going on at the time between Wadena and Park Rapids. 15 seconds left to go here in the first five nothing Little Falls. Maybe one last chance here for the Flyers. Aiden Johnson slides that one through the crease area. In the corner now, Stevens. Back now, quick shot there by Nez. Save is made, juicy rebound, and there's the horn, and the period comes to an end. Ooh, and almost a swipe at the end there by one of the North Star players, that being Zach Dieters, as he uh, was trying to put an elbow towards Matt Philippi. I think that's a period that you'd like to see from a team seated number one in the section. The Little Falls Flyers have won 10 games this year. Earlier this year, they beat Prairie Center 10 to one. Shots 20 for the Little Falls Flyers, two for the North Stars. It was kind of a relentless rush for the Flyers through the neutral zone into the offensive end of the ice. We don't have official t statistics to tell us how long the Little Falls Flyers were in the Prairie Center North Stars zone, but it was a an extreme amount of time, and I guarantee you Joe Netarozic would like to see more play in the Flyers zone in period two. Well, they had four goals in the first game after one period of play. Little Falls did over Prairie Center, and tonight it's 5 nothing after one period of play. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll have the first period summary, take a look at some out-of-town scores, and we'll also talk a little bit more about Class A hockey and all the latest rankings and also all the other games that have happened yesterday in the playoffs. 5 nothing Flyers after one. Our break after this on Flyer Media Productions, Q92 and FallsRadio.com. We want Rudolph Auto Solutions to be your service and oil change. Teens, you got a little extra time to get the paperwork put together. There you go. Speaking of paperwork, you got your paperwork ready to go for our first period summer? Yes, with the Little Falls Flyers leading 5 nothing after one period of play. And Little Falls in the Section 6A quarterfinals looking for their 11th win of the season. They had a good period, and it starts at 41 seconds of the first 18th goal of the season from Matt Philippi as the Flyers are able to keep the puck alive, dancing along the goal line extended and passing it out to Matt Philippi, his 18th of the season into the back of the North Star net to give the Little Falls Flyers a 1-0 lead. It was Philippi from Robbie Kaczynski Helgeson and Nick Stevens, again 41 seconds of the first period, and Little Falls took a 1-0 lead. It was 2-0 Flyers at 4.26 of the first, 15th goal of the season for Gunnar Gustafson as the Flyers keep the puck alive along the left side. Good pass from Kaczynski Helgeson down low to Hirsch over to Gustafson, and he fires it past Netarozic to give the Flyers a 2-0 lead. Sixth of the season for Gustafson, first assist Hirsch, second assist Kaczynski Helgeson, 2-0 Little Falls. Just past the halfway point of the first period, 8.45 to be exact, it was Nicholas Stevens netting his 11th goal of the season. And the Stevens goal, as we look at it here on Flyer Media Productions, Stevens hands it off there to Hayden Johnson. Shot came from the line, and it was tipped by Nick Stevens in front. Good shot from the blue line. And Stevens' tip eludes Netarozic, his 11th of the season, and it gives the Flyers a 3-0 lead. Little Falls would take a 4-0 lead as they get the fifth goal of the season from Hayden Johnson. Flyers are able to keep the puck alive there in the left wing corner. It's Stevens. Stevens sends it around the side of the net in front. Waiting was... Hayden Johnson to put it in the back of the North Star net. Johnson's fifth of the season, single assist to Stevens, and it gave Little Falls a 4-0 lead. Final goal of the first period at 13.50. It's going to be the second goal of the season for Jake Tchaikovsky. As the Flyers flip one in, it goes off skates. Morrison keeps it alive on the side of the net, and then it's Jake Tchaikovsky without too much emotion, knocking that puck between the legs of Netarozic to give the Little Falls Flyers a 5-0 lead for Tchaikovsky, his second of the season, single assist to Tower Morrison. Five goals for the Flyers in the first period. Philippi, 
Gustafson, Stevens, Johnson, and Chikowski. Shots on goal in the first. Favorite Little Falls, 20 to two. Dane Kucher, the senior, tending net for the Little Falls Flyers. Two of two in the first. Joe Nederozic, the sophomore, he was 15 of 20. No penalties whistled against the Flyers or the North Stars in period one. As a result, neither the Flyers nor the North Stars had a power play opportunity. Little Falls is 10-4 and one. Prairie Center is 2-12 and one. After one period of play from the Exchange Arena in the Section 6A quarterfinals, it's Little Falls five. Prairie Center, nothing. We'll take another break. We'll come back. We'll give you some out-of-town scores and the second period. Once again, you're watching on Flyer Media Productions and listening on Q92 and FallsRadio.com. Hello, this is Jeff Check, the owner of Check Auto Body and Towing of Piers. Your vehicle is the second big investment you'll ever make in your lifetime. When you need repairs, make sure you work with the most trusted name in central Minnesota. At Check Auto Body, the repairs we perform are covered with a lifetime guarantee on workmanship, labor, and paint. You can rest assured that when you get back on the road, your vehicle will be safe and return back to pre-accident condition. Our 30-year mission has been to deliver only the best to our customers. We work with all insurance companies and will assist you through the process. If you're in an accident, choose a shop you can trust. Check Auto Body and Towing, Morrison County's largest body shop. Come check us out. Fleet Supply True Value in Little Falls has everything you need for all your outdoor and indoor projects. They have a great selection of tools, kitchen, pet, and paint supplies, footwear, and so much more. Also, check out their great monthly bargains with tons of in-store savings. Fleet Supply True Value, your complete farm and home store. Located in 1800 First Avenue North in Little Falls. Behind every project is a true value. We're here with Katie Jackson and Cheryl Plouffe, the mortgage team from Pine Country Bank. I have been in the real estate industry for the past 33 years. I've been a mortgage processor for the last 18 years. Doing mortgage loans as long as we have, we know the ins and outs of doing the mortgages and therefore we try to simplify the process. There's a lot of complicated stuff that goes on behind the scenes and Cheryl and I try to take care of all of that for the borrowers so that they can try to relax and enjoy their time buying versus being stressed out over the very complicated process. All of our years of experience working together allows us to do this for them. We've done several loans for people and now have done loans for their children. People have heard our name in the industry for a very long time now and we are well known for our expertise in the market. Pine Country Bank is your hometown bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. Little Falls students are encouraging each other to rise up for mental health. If you or someone you care about is experiencing any mental health challenges, please talk to a trusted friend or mental health professional. On any given day, any of us could be facing extra stress and unexpected difficulties. As a community, we can rise up together and help ensure all students feel supported every day. All students need a positive interaction with friends, peers, and adults on a regular basis. Today and every day, join Little Falls students in their movement to create more positive interactions for every student every day. Are you in the mood for remodeling your floors? We check floors and more have top brands of carpeting, hardwood, laminate, tile, rugs, blinds, and more. If you're not able to come in to We Check Floors and More, they'll come to you with the latest and newest styles of flooring. We Check Floors and More are the flooring experts. Call today for a free estimate and consultation. 632-4201 or stop into their showroom, which is at 50 East Broadway in Little Falls. Let them floor you, let them floor you. We Check Floors and More. All right, hockey fans, welcome back once again here to the Exchange Arena. James Shimshi along with Jamie Pettit. Some scores out of town in Section 6A. First of all, after one period of play, it is Sartell leading St. Cloud Cathedral 3-1. to one. And after one period of play, Alexandria leading Morris Benson by a score of 3 to nothing. No score yet to report on Fergus Falls Breckenridge. Jamie's working on as we speak right now. And switching over into Section 4A, Gentry Academy with a 3-0 lead after one period of play. St. Paul Johnson leading St. Paul Highland by a score of 3-1 after one period of play. And it is Tartan with a 2-0 lead over South St. Paul that after one 
period of play. So those are some of the out-of-town scores that we have. Coming up in the second intermission, we'll update those, and we'll also run down the scores from yesterday as we have a bunch of semifinal games that'll be happening tomorrow, along with a few quarterfinal actions going on in section seven and eight, as there'll be four games going on in that too. So 17 minutes in the books, five nothing is our score as the Little Falls Flyers lead the Netminder switch ends. And we are underway with the second period of hockey as picked up by Eli Fletcher, nearly gave that one up to Matt Phillippe, who's got a goal tonight already for Little Falls. As there's five different goal scorers for the Flyers so far in that first period. Shots, as we mentioned, 20 for the Flyers, just two for Prairie Center. Picked up here, moving in, shot, score, Stevens. And he deked the Netminder. Nederosic, and it's now 6-0 in favor of Little Falls. Second goal of the night for Nick Stevens. As Stevens had the puck there in the right wing corner, came darting from that corner, got it in front of the net and knocked it past Nederosic just 24 seconds into the second period to give Little Falls a 6-0 lead. Second of the night for Stevens, his 12th of the season. Flyers scored 41 seconds into period one. They score 24 seconds into period two. 12th for Stevens. He's already got a four point night too. Yes, he does. He goes from uh, 89 to 93 goals or points total. Are you going to say unassisted on that? I, I believe so. it was an unassisted goal. But as I mentioned, uh, four points tonight for Nick Stevens and uh, now just seven points away from the 100 point clock. And we still got uh, almost two full periods left here. So this will go out of play. I know you were trying to get that I score. I have a score. Okay. I have a score from Fergus Falls. Yep. Early in the second period, the Fergus Falls Otters four, Breckenridge Wapiton nothing. Okay, so we've got all the scores in. As we mentioned, Sartell, a 3-1 lead after one, three nothing, Alexander over Morris Benson, and the four nothing lead for Fergus Falls over Breckenridge Wap. We'll no surprises. Nope, no surprises as of now. And a six nothing lead for the Flyers. And here's Morrison and that one just didn't make it in. Boy, that was close. Tower Morrison just turned around and it kind of fluttered right by the netminder, Netarose. It's almost gonna be seven nothing. So we played a minute here of the second. Here's Cooper with it. Matt Cooper now still with it, has it in the corner. Puck taken away from him there. Hoffman had it. Hoffman and tied up there with Tchaikovsky. And finally picked up here by the North Stars, and they'll get it out to center ice. Colton Johnson at neutral ice, gets it to Inez. Inez over Tchaikovsky, chops it in. Gunnar Gustafson gonna get there first. Gustafson behind the net. Gustafson now, Gachinski, Halgesen, puck taken away from him. Gunnar Gustafson now has it, tried to feed it in the slot there to Hirsch. Pass was too hard, now Hirsch has it at the right wall, plays it down into the corner there, Kaczynski Halgesen, as he's being bumped around there. Gunnar Gustafson comes up with it now. Left half wall, plays it down now to Kaczynski Halgesen as they cycle, wide open as Gunnar Gustafson clanks it off the pipe. He had all day long, he picked his spot and got mostly metal. Back down low, Gunnar Gustafson goes through his game. Here's a shot there by Hirsch, and then a Rose gets a piece. Our first penalty coming up here against the North Stars. With 14.49 to go here in the second, a 6-0 lead, and Prairie Center starting to take exception of the 6-0 deficit right now, and they'll go to the box here, and we'll wait and see who goes in. Zach Dieters ushered to the penalty box, a two-minute minor for roughing. Dieters for roughing. It gives the Little Falls Flyers a power play, their first power play of the night. Seven power play goals this season, leading the way, Nick Stevens, he's got three. And Chad Wormer says he wants a timeout here. He wants to settle the kids down, and a six nothing lead, we'll keep it right here. And don't forget, Pizza Ranch power play in effect. Both these teams were only 0 for 1 in the last game, so they only each had one chance. But the Pizza Ranch power play in effect, the Flyers score on the power play. I want to be calling number two tonight at 632-2306. We've got an endless supply of those certificates, so if the Flyers <laughs> score on the power play, don't worry, you'll get one. Which, by the way, I need one to uh, sign for Dane Kucher. Oh yeah, we'll get Saturday. that. We'll get that. That, that that's a different one. That's, that, a, that's Oh, I that's see. A There's a different one. certificate. Oh, yeah, yeah. The player that, of the game certificate yep. is different than the Pizza Ranch Power Play so certificate. So the, the player of the game, okay. obviously, that is uh, good for a large okay. pizza or a buffet okay. where the 
Pizza Ranch power plays good. just for a good large pizza. Okay, so I'll give good. that to Thank you. Thank you. I'll take care of Put that. Put that next uh, to Nick Stevens' puck. I will personalize <laughs> that for Dane after the game. That's for the War Road. That's for the uh, Pizza Ranch player of the game in War Road. So we've got that business taken care of. That we do. And don't forget the Pizza Ranch has got those wings. Have you had the wings yet from the Pizza no, Ranch? No, but it sounds good. Why don't you? you so, Wadena has yes, a Pizza Ranch. absolutely. Maybe tomorrow Pick night. Pick up her delivery. Pick, delivery sounds good. That's what you can do. Yeah. Get some traditional or boneless wings. Yeah. They have or five maybe different a mixture. sauces. Yeah, maybe a mixture. Yeah, that's a good idea for tomorrow night. I just might do that. Yeah, go along with the beverage of your choice. Yes. 14.49 to go here in the second. And a Pizza Ranch power play the first of the night for the Flyers. Just 7 of 52 on the year for 13.5%. Coach Kuchar talked about that in his keys to the game. He wants the Flyers to sharpen up on the power play. 67.3% on the penalty kill here for Prairie Center. 35 of 52. And they have scored two shorthanded goals this year. Trailing now by six, little give and go. They tried to get it to Marshall and Nez. That's where he was camped out. That's where he scored his lone goal this year, camped out in the dirty zone down in that crease area. Back now, here's Majerly. And Johnson, back to Majerly, shoots, and scores! And Joe Majerly is our Pizza Ranch power play goal scorer. Caller number two is gonna win some pizza at 6-3-2. 2306 and Joe Majerly's second of the year at 7 0 Flyers. Good job by Inez providing the screen in front, and it's Majerly rifling one in from the top inside the blue line to beat Netta Rosick for Majerly, his second of the season. And the Little Falls Flyers take a commanding 7 0 lead. Shots favor the Flyers 24 2. So the goal scored by Majerly, his second of the year. And our Pizza Ranch power play winner will be coming shortly. Majorly with an assist number 19, Hayden Johnson, and number 9, Gabe Hirsch. That, that's a power, power So Hayden Johnson and Gabe Hirsch get the assist. The goal scored on the power play. One of one. I don't think we've been able to say that too much this year. Just 37 seconds into the power play, the Flyers convert. Here's an opportunity now. Laid right behind the net. This is Cray with it. Shadowing him there that time is Hoffman. This gets on the way through. Morrison going to go after it. He'll get there first. Morrison puts on the brakes, passes out of front. Tchaikovsky shot, and Nidarosa got a piece of that one. Back out to center ice it comes. Moore now has it at center. Circles around, avoids the check at the blue line. Now got tripped up. Play continues on. That would have been a penalty. It, it will be a penalty, yes. I was just going to say it. It would have normally been a penalty in maybe a closer game, and it is a penalty in a 7-0 game too. It's gonna to be a tripping minor to the Prairie Center North Stars at 3.30 of the second period. The official from the neutral zone spotted that infraction going into the box for the North Stars, Tanner Lambrecht. Yeah, you know those phones are lighting up at Little Falls Radio right now. Christina's probably scrambling to get that winner, but another Pizza Ranch power play opportunity coming up here for the Flyers as they are one for one on the evening. And were they able to keep it in? I guess not. Kalipnik has it out at center ice. Take it away there by Philippi. He'll get it back down to Gunnar Gustafsson. Gustafsson at his own blue line. Leaves it off here now. And this is Moore with it. Moore comes across the line. Moore now goes into the corner. Pivots back out of there. Out of the circle. Back down to Gustafsson. On the tape of Stevens. Right wing side. Moore wide open. Walks in. Fires a shot. And Netarozic with a big save and a juicy rebound back to Moore. Moore now to Stevens. Stevens walks in, plays down low now. Gunnar Gustafson slides it over. Back now to Stevens at the left point. Plays it to the right side. That's where Phillippe walks in, fires a shot. Tried to go five hole and a nice save there. It's close in the pads was Netarozic with 12.45 to go here in the second. Seven nothing Little Falls, still 116 on the Pizza Ranch power play and that penalty serve by Tanner Lambrecht. Recapping the two goals for the Flyers here in the second period at 24 seconds, an unassisted goal for Nick Stevens, his 12th of the season. That gave the Flyers a 6-0 lead. It was 7-0 Flyers at 2.48 of the second. A power play goal for Joel Majerly. First assist, Hayden Johnson. Second assist, senior captain, Gabe Hirsch. Majerly with a shot, save is made, and then somebody was in the crease, I believe, here. As, uh, well, then Rosick made the save and held on, I guess. 
the most recent Let's Play Hockey Class A poll has Gentry Academy at number one. They're the number one seed in Section 4A. After one period, it's two to one, Gentry Academy over South St. Paul. No, I had it three nothing though. I just, you had it three nothing? I just saw yeah. a two one score out there. I, I had it three, three nothing. By okay. the way, uh, Randy, check on that. Randy Pakula of Holding Floor, congratulations. You're oh, that's a girl score, sorry. Pizza Ranch. Sorry, James. It's okay. Misinform the listeners. I actually told the listeners while you okay. were trying now to. Now it's 4 nothing, four Gentry nothing. Academy. All good, all okay. good. Okay. But once again, Randy Pakula, congratulations. Our latest win in the Pizza Ranch power play. And we're still in a Pizza Ranch power play for another 35 seconds here. 12 minutes to go in the second. 7 nothing Flyers. Majorly. Aiden Johnson shoots, scores! And the phones are going to be ringing again, Christina. 632-2306 as Hayden Johnson has a power play goal. And the Flyers, a perfect two for two on the power play. They lead 8-0. Stevens had it off the wall over to Majerly and then knocked into the net by Hayden Johnson. Hayden Johnson gets his second of the night, his sixth of the season. And it gives Little Falls an 8-0 lead. They are now two for two on the power play. So the second goal of the night, five and six for Hayden Johnson. Hayden Johnson with an assist to number seven, Joe Majerly, and number 33, Nicholas Stevens. Stevens now with five points on the night. And it's now eight nothing in favor of the Flyers. Played it out to center ice. We're back to five on five hockey. 11.30 to go here in the second. Shots are 28 for Little Falls three for Prairie Center. They've only had one in this period, but they've also had to try to kill off two penalties, but they've been unsuccessful as the Flyers are a perfect two for two on the power play tonight. That hasn't happened yet this year. I don't even know if the Flyers have had two power play goals in one game this year. Coming across the line, here's an opportunity at Tchaikovsky, just a little bit too far in front of him. Has received a pass, now wrist shot taken there by Morrison. Comes back to the point. Rexdad with a shot on net. Buck bouncing now in front of Nederosic there as Cooper got a piece of it. Cooper now on the half wall. Puck taken away from him. Hoffman will send it all the way down. They'll say it was tipped, no icing. 10.40 and Dane now sends it all the way up. Nice little move at the blue line by Kaczynski Helgeson. Hirsch now coming into the play. Puck taken away there by Hellman. He'll play it into the corner. Gustafson now has it. Left circle, Gustafson still with it. Plays it off to Inez. Inez now will play it in an open corner behind the net. Touch there by Hirsch. Kaczynski Halgeson on the right wing side now. Taken here this time by Gustafson. He'll go into the corner. Come along the goal line, extended. And the puck behind the net now comes over to Inez. Now a quick shot by Colton Johnson. As uh, all sorts of stick work in front of the net there of Netarozic. As it was Hirsch there battling, I believe that was Williams. Now Penner's passed out in the slot. Shot taken wide there by Kaczynski Helgeson. Inside of 10 minutes to go here in the second. And to relieve the pressure, it'll be cleared the length of the ice. And we, we might have a penalty, penalty coming up here. And they're going to take uh, Gabe Hirsch for something. Interference. Interference call against the Little Falls Flyers, and that will put the North Stars on the power play for the first time in this game. Hirsch for interference, time of the penalty, 7-10 of the second period. North Star power play down, 8 nothing. Hey, congratulations to Tammy Philippi of Little Falls. She is our second winner of the Pizza Ranch power play tonight, so congratulations, Tammy. Thanks for listening. Here's an opportunity for the North Stars now, their first power play of the night. Six for 48, 12.5%. And the penalty kills 76.7%, 33 of 43 for the Flyers. That one shorthanded goal on the year two. Flipped out to center ice. And on side here is Philippi and Stevens, shorthanded wise. Stevens behind the net. Stevens still with it. Stevens now plays it over on the right wing side. Gets it to Colton Johnson, tipped in front there, and taken down in front of the net miner there was Philippi. Play continues on. Goes off the glass. Kind of bounced around there. 
It almost looked like Stevens was playing racquetball there along with the glass. Now Philippi has it. They're on the penalty kill, but they have the sustained pressure. Shot there, and that one over the cage there, Neta Rosic. Neta Rosic was just scrambling to get back into position. And it'll be cleared the length of the ice to kill the pressure of a penalty kill. The North Stars on the power play, but the Flyers too much shorthanded in the North Stars end of the ice. And Prairie Center had seen enough, and they sent the puck down the length of the ice. They're called for icing on the power play. You asked earlier, had Little Falls scored two power play goals this season? Yes, they did. They were two for six in the 4-3 win against the Fergus Falls Otters on March 8th. That's right. Flyers actually their power play in the last, well let's see, maybe the War Road, they didn't score on that one, but they scored two obviously in the Fergus Falls game, and then they've had two tonight, so they've been doing better as of late on the power play. Yeah, four power play goals in their last three games. And how many attempts would that be officially? As we're down to 8-10 to go here in the second, 20 seconds left to go here on the power play for Prairie Center, which hasn't had a shot, hasn't even got it barely out of the zone. Kaczynski Helgeson now picks it up, passes it over, wide open, shot there, score, Gustafson! And it's 9-0, Little Falls, and now we have a high sticking call. Are they gonna wave off the goal? Or who got the high stick here? Well, they're going to think they, they called Robbie Kaczynski Helgeson for high sticking. No goal. They'll wave no it goal. off. And Robbie Kaczynski Helgeson's in the penalty box. Well, it's, I like a little explanation here because that is. Check on the. Robbie Kaczynski Helgeson made the pass right. to Gunnar Gustafsson. And Gustafson put the puck into the net, but the uh, officials waved off the goal and took and put Kaczynski Helgeson into the penalty Let's box. Go back to the replay here. There's the hit. Now Gunnar Gustafson, or there's Kaczynski Helgeson. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing. Uh, where is the penalty? <laughs> well, if there was a penalty on Kaczynski Helgeson, it had to be before the replay started, and then the play should have been blown dead. Exactly. So there was, obviously, we just saw there was no penalty. Here's a chance for Steven. Oh, the stick was slow. That's a penalty shot. Should be a penalty shot. That should be a penalty shot. It will be. As uh, one of the North Star players threw their stick, which is a no-no. And Nick Stevens might be signing a puck here <laughs> and scoring a goal on a penalty shot. As you watch here on the replay, as the kid threw the stick, trying to see what number that was. And it'll be Stevens along with Neta Rosic. They're gonna battle here. Let's see who's gonna win this battle. Would this be considered a shorthanded goal? Shorthanded penalty shot goal. You have to get the rule book out now. 7.43 to go here in the second. And penalty shot was called as it was a breakaway and the stick was thrown at the puck. Here comes Nick Stevens. He'll come in on the left wing. Left circle moves in, moves to the forehand. What a deke! He shoots, he scores! Nick Stevens wants to join the 100 point club tonight. He's 11 points away, he's already got six points. Well, Stevens is a left handed shot, meanders down the left side, starts to stick handle from there, and makes the quick move and tucks the forehand in behind Neta Rosic to give Little Falls a 9 0 lead. And that's the hat trick. For Nick Stevens. Goals yes. 11, 12, and 13 on the season for Stevens. And he's got uh, four assists. He's got seven points tonight. And now he's at. Eli Fletcher throwing a stick. So he's Eli Fletcher was the one that was throwing the stick. And that was successful. Scoring for the Flyers, number 33, Nicholas Stevens. So Stevens is the one that obviously scored the penalty shot, but it was because of the thrown stick by. Fletcher and seven points tonight for Stevens now gives him 96 in his career. I've got Stevens with three assists. Oh, yeah, yeah, three? Yep. One, two, three. Okay, you're right. Yep, three goals and three assists, six points. 
I looked at, uh, I believe it was Tower Morris in there, the 13, and I thought I saw a 33. So a penalty shot goal for Nick Stevens at 9-17 of the second period. Gives the Little Falls Flyers a 9-0 lead. The penalty was against Prairie Center's Eli Fletcher for throwing his stick. Still a minute 12 on the phantom high sticking call. And a 9-0 lead here for the Flyers. Seven minutes to go here in the second. And a power play here once again for the North Stars as so far they're 0 for 1. In the middle of power play number two of the night. Played back here. Craig gets it over to Rexted. Can't clear it out as it was knocked down there by Imdick. Played to the line, not out yet. Still controlled here. Now Imdick turns around, fires a shot right into Cray. Imdick gets it back again, plays it back to the point. Dieters now one time shot there. That one just wide. That's Eli Fletcher. Stick in hand this time. 6.20 to go here in the second. And the 9 0 lead. Pass in front. Fletcher now going to try to track it down and keep it in. He'll keep it in at the blue line. Wrist shot on net. Kucher makes his fifth save of the night and holds on. Well, I got the statistician's manual out because I don't want to disappoint you. And here's what it says. A goal scored on a penalty shot is always even strength. However, it should be noted if the attempt was awarded during a power play or a shorthanded situation. <laughs> okay. That's why I carry the statistician's manual in this red binder. There you go. It comes in handy once every three years. <laughs> Remember though, back in the day when you got, you know, encyclopedias, yeah. you know, if you remember when, you when know, the encyclopedia salesman came to the exactly. door. Exactly. Well, Jamie basically yeah. is like an encyclopedia well, no. salesman with all the no. stuff that he has I've, with I've him. I've had, made a couple mistakes already in this game, including <laughs> reporting a wrong score for Gentry Academy. Well, you're a big girl, so uh, I've got to, I've got to fan. watch those tweets a little closer on follow the puck. It was a girl's score, not a boy's score. It's okay. Unfortunately, the Brainerd Little Falls girls lost last night in overtime to Alexandria 2-1, so the Warriors season comes to an end as Alexandria will take on Rozo tomorrow for the championship. 9-0 is our score here. Flyers lead, 5-15 to go here in the second. And play to the left of the net, Minor Neta Rosa. Comes back to the point now. Touch there by Majerly. Now on the end wall, that's Cooper with it. He lost it, flipped out to center ice. Picked up by Moore. And then sent in here by Morrison, and they'll change up the lines. There's a quick shot on net. Erosic makes the save. And we'll get another whistle stout. This game getting a little bit chippy, but uh, you would probably anticipate that with a 9-0 score. And, we, once we get to the third period, if it's more than a six goal or more differential, we will go to running time. We've had five penalties in the second period. There were no penalties in period one. Three against the North Stars, two to the Flyers. Of course, one of those North Star penalties was to Eli Fletcher for throwing his stick. Stevens had the penalty shot, which he did convert on. Flyers are two for two on the power play tonight. The North Stars are 0 for two with the man advantage. This is a correct score, I'm quite certain. It's Sartell 5, St. Cloud Cathedral 1 in the second period. So if that stands in Sartell and if Little Falls continues on this path that they are towards victory, it will be Sartell and Little Falls on Tuesday night in the Section 6A semifinals here at the Exchange Arena. But again, both games still to be decided. Still to be decided, but if that does turn out that way, it's the same way the schedule played out. Prairie Center, Little Falls played each other, and then Little Falls played Sartell two days later. It's kind of the same scenario, except it'll be four days later. 4.30 to go here in the second. 9-0 Flyers. They led 5-0 after one. They've tallied four more here in the second, including a hat trick by Nick Stevens, the guy that has the puck right now, and he got that hat trick on the penalty shot. Back to the high slot. Shot taken there by Rexted as Ben looking for his first goal in his career as a senior. He's got one point, but he's looking for that goal. I'd like to see some of that happen tonight here, maybe. Inside of four minutes to go in the second. Shots are 34 to five. Stevens now walks over. Shot taken there by Majerly. Another save by Netarose. 
Gets it back now to Stevens. Stevens now waits, waits, fires a shot, tipped there, and that one just wide by Philippi. And it'll be cleared the length of the ice to the racing coming up here against Prairie Center. 35 to five, the Little Falls Flyers have the shots on goal advantage. It was 20 to two in the shots on goal department in the Flyers favor after one period, but here in period two, 15 for the Flyers, three for the North Stars. Little Falls has added four more goals. They are cruising right now up nine to nothing. Face off at the right circle. To the left of the net, Minder Neto Rosick. Gunnar Gustafson wins the draw, but then the North Stars play it to the line, and Polipnik tries to clear it out, unable to do so. Gunnar Gustafson oh. shot, clanked another pipe. I think he's hit two tonight. Gunnar Gustafson behind the net. He'll leave it in the corner. Kaczynski Halgesson. Kaczynski Halgesson now into the circle. Quick shot, score! And it's 10 0 Flyers. Robbie Kaczynski Helgeson rips it past Netterozik as Kaczynski Helgeson had it back behind the net, swerves to the left faceoff dot and just rocketed a wrist shot past Netterozik to give the Flyers a 10-0 lead. And for Robbie Kaczynski Helgeson, it's his first of the game and his 12th of the season. Time of the goal, 13.46 of the second. Flyers back on the attack once again. Kaczynski Halgeson to Gunnar Gustafson. Gustafson behind the net. Now Hirsch plays it out in front, tried to play it out in front. In the corner now, this is Hirsch with it once again. Behind, Hirsch now thought about passing it out to Nez. Fires a shot and a Rosic save and a quick whistle there as that puck was never covered. Robbie Kaczynski Halgeson. That's Robbie Kaczynski Halgeson unassisted. So Kaczynski Halgeson unassisted. His 12th of the year, as you mentioned, and it's 10-0 Little Falls. Another offensive zone faceoff for the Flyers. This is their third line tonight, centered by the sophomore Matthew Cooper. Tower Morrison's on the left, and Jake Tchaikovsky's on the right. Play to the line, just out to center ice. Picked up here now by Klein. They dump it across the line. Cray has it. Just five shots for Prairie Center here in the opening 33 minutes. Kind of wraparound attempt that time down low there was Klein. Played up to the line and uh, not out to center yet. Tchaikovsky now will slide it into the North Star end. And the North Stars have it out at neutral ice. That's Hoffman will dump it down. It should be icing, and it will be. With 2.03 to go here in the second. Just a reminder, you're watching on Flyer Media Productions and listening on Q92 WIRQ Little Falls. Streaming online at fallsradio.com. James Hershey, Jamie Pettit here. Christina back in our game engineer. Mark Deal and the entire crew here for Flyer Media Productions. Our crew doing a great job as usual tonight from the Exchange Arena. That they are. And a 10-0 lead. Opportunity for the Flyers once again. As this is Philippi. Little pass out, quick shot there, save is made. As that was Hayden Johnson looking for another goal tonight. He's got a couple already. Hayden Johnson's just getting roughed up in front there that time by the other number 19, Lambrack. Bodies flying all over the place now, and this will be tipped out to center ice. Majorly will go back and pick up the loose puck. Try to keep it away there. From Eisenbart. Out to center ice, home run pass, caught there by Philippi, gives it up here to oh. Johnson, tried to give it back to Philippi, didn't have enough though on the back pass there, and it's played back out to center ice. One fifteen to go here in the second. Picked up by Hayden Johnson. Hayden Johnson slides it over to Philippi. Philippi now has it on the right half wall, trying to avoid a check there that time of Lambrecht. Coming out of the pile, here's Stevens with it. Stevens now, he's tripped up. That should be a penalty and nothing called. This will be cleared the length of the ice. Back now all the way through. Though That should be not an icing. Wow, that's, anyway. <laughs> it's 10 nothing. <laughs> Take your blood pressure medicine, settle down. That's it's fine. It's a 10 nothing lead it for is. the Little Falls Flyers. 
49.1 seconds to go here in the second. All flyers in this one. Coming up in the second intermission, we'll run down all the scoring. Five more goals, and we'll try to get you caught up some out-of-town scores and some games from last night. Just 10 games. 10 playoff games tonight. It was busy last night. Oh, yeah. We had 40 plus, and tomorrow will be another busy day, especially in double A. Yes, it will. Uh, tomorrow, the single A for seven and eight will have their quarter. Their quarters, right? yes. So you'll see Hermantown, the number one seed, and Warro, the number one seed in their respective sections. Blast there by Kaczynski Helgeson. Netarozic with the save and holds on. In fact, we're going to have plenty of time to talk in the third period will be in running time. But Hermantown plays Proctor tomorrow. Virginia is at home against Eveleth Gilbert. Duluth Denfeld already advanced on because mm -hmm. of International Falls unable to play. And so they're in the semifinals. And then you have Hibbing at home against Greenway. In Section 8A, Warroad is at home against Bagley. It'll be Kitson County Central at home against Red Lake Falls. Thief River Falls at home against Crookston. And East Grand Forks, the two seed, at home against Lake of the Woods. Nine seconds left to go here in the second. As Kuchar covers up and the North Stars will have an offensive zone face off with 8.3 seconds remaining in the second period. Flyers led five nothing after one. They get five more here in the second. So I have one more face off thing here is before we'll end the period. Eli Fletcher able to keep it in. Inez got tripped up in the corner, and there's the horn. Period comes to an end. Five more goals for the Flyers. They lead 10-0 after two periods of play, Jamie. An impressive 34 minutes for the Little Falls Flyers. Relentless. One shot after another on the Joe Netarozic, the sophomore in the Prairie Center North Stars net. Uh, the Flyers uh, had the pedal to the metal in the second, and it looks like they're ready to cruise in to the Section 6A semifinals on Tuesday night. As they lead 10-0, Stevens leading the way for the Little Falls Flyers with three goals and three assists for six points. All right, Jamie's gonna be busy here in about three minutes, giving us the second period summary. When we come back, 10-0 is our score here on Flyer Media Productions, Q92 and fallsradio.com. When you need quality repair, quality service, the only name to remember is Homerson Collision Center. Hi, this is Michelle. Our collision work is always guaranteed for the life of your vehicle. The reason we can do this is because of the great work our team here at Homerson Collision Center does. We hope you never get into an accident, but if you do, we're here to help. At Homerson Collision Center, quality repair, quality service, guaranteed is not just a slogan, but our promise to you. Homerson Collision Center is looking for full-time auto body technicians. Experience preferred, will train. Stop in today. You have Here's some memories in your home, the most valuable things you'll ever own. Let us help you protect what matters most. West Bend's Home and Highway Policy provides you with one policy, one bill, one deductible, and one agent while protecting your home, car, truck, boat, motorcycle, snowmobile, and more, all with no hassle and a portion of your annual premium back in cash if you don't have a claim. To find out more, contact Marsha Insurance Agency in Little Falls at 320-632-2328. Ron's Oil and Propane is a locally owned family business that provides superior fuel for farms, homes, and businesses. The Shapers additive Ron's use will give you the edge for performance and power. Ron's Oil and Propane serves Little Falls, Staples, and Motley area. No hidden fees or charges, just great fuel. Experienced drivers and outstanding customer service. Always competitively priced. Ron's Oil and Propane, 877-256-3680. Hello, this is Carla from Advanced Physical Therapy. Are you having surgery and need to choose a place to do your rehab? Choose Advanced Physical Therapy to help you recover and return to prior level of function. We specialize in physical therapy before and after surgery. Advanced Physical Therapy is located at 309 First Street Northeast in Little Falls. Call us today to schedule your pre or post-surgical therapy at 320-631-2302. When you need your garbage removed, call Bob Lemire Roll-Off and Refuse in Little Falls. Locally owned and operated, Bob Lemire Roll-Off and Refuse is ready to pick up your garbage and save you money. No administrative fees, no contracts. They offer both commercial and residential service. Whether you need a roll-off, dumpster, or can, call them today at 320-632-5212. That's 632-5212. 
Bob Lemire Roloff and Refuge in Little Falls, living and working with you in your community. This is what matters. This is beyond X's and O's. This is the difference mutual respect makes. This is what character looks like. This is what defines us in Minnesota. This is sportsmanship. School sports, it's not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. This message presented by the Minnesota State High School League and the Minnesota Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. Welcome back once again to the Exchange Arena. All Little Falls in this quarterfinal section 6A game as the Flyers, the number one seed, lead 10-0 over the number nine seed Prairie Center with our second period summary brought to you by Schlenner, Wenner and Company. Here's Jamie Pettit. The number one seed, Little Falls Flyers, 10 wins, four losses and a tie. Prairie Center, the nine seed, two wins, 12 losses and a tie. Two periods complete, it's 10-0 Little Falls. Flyers led 5-0 after one. They lead 10-0 after two as they get five second period goals. The first at the 24 second mark as Nick Stevens nets his second of the game, 12th of the season. As Stevens is deep in that right wing corner, is able to fight off some North Stars and get to the net, get it past Netta Rosick to give the Little Falls Flyers a six nothing lead. Flyers led seven nothing at 2.48 of the second period as they get a power play goal. Joel Majerly gets his second of the season as the Flyers work the puck along the left wing boards. Hirsch got it to Hayden Johnson. Hayden Johnson and Joel Majerly play catch. Eventually, it's Majerly beating Nederozic from the high slot. Majerly's second of the season. A power play goal gave Little Falls a 7-0 lead. Johnson and Hirsch received assists on the seventh of the night for the Flyers. It was 8-0 Little Falls at 5.04 of the second period. Another power play goal, their second of the night. This time it's Hayden Johnson as Stevens works it to Majerly, over to Johnson and into the back of the North Star net. Johnson's sixth of the season, his second of the game. First assist Majerly, second assist Nick Stevens. It was 8-0 Little Falls. Then we had the penalty shot. Penalty shot for the Little Falls Flyers as Prairie Center's Eli Fletcher got a ticket for throwing his stick. And here's Stevens on the penalty shot for those watching on Flyer Media Productions. Quick stick work at the end there to get it past Netta Rosick. And Stevens gets his third of the game, his 13th of the season, a penalty shot goal for Nick Stevens. He's got six points tonight and that gave the Little Falls Flyers a 9-0 lead. Final goal of the second period at 13:46, and this is gonna be the 12th goal of the season for Robbie Kaczynski-Helgeson. Helgeson back behind the net, gets it through a couple North Stars, sweeps to the left faceoff dot, and his wrist shot beat Netta Rosick to give the Flyers a 10-0 lead. For Robbie Kaczynski Helgeson, again, his 12th of the season at 1346 of the second, as the Flyers take a 10 0 lead into the second period intermission. Shots on goal in the second 18 for Little Falls, 5 for Prairie Center. Through two periods, Little Falls has a 38 7 shots on goal advantage. Dane Kucher, the senior, tending net for the Little Falls Flyers, 5 of 5 in the second. Kucher, through two periods, 7 of 7. Joe Netterosic, the sophomore in the Prairie Center North Star net, 13 of 18 in the second period. Netterosic, 28 of 38 through two periods. Two minor penalties whistled against the Little Falls Flyers. Prairie Center's 0 for 2 on the power play. Three minor penalties against the Prairie Center North Stars. Little Falls is 2 for 2 on the power play, plus they have a penalty shot goal from Nick Stevens. The Flyers, the number one seed in the Section 6A playoffs. They're in command. They lead the Prairie Center North Stars from the Exchange Arena 10 to nothing. Let's take another break. We'll come back. We'll give you some out-of-town scores and set the stage for you in some of the other sections that happened last night. Once again, 10 nothing Flyers lead. Back after the break on Flyer Media Productions, Q92 and FallsRadio.com. Hello, this is Jeff Check, the owner of Check Auto Body and Towing of Piers. Accidents happen all the time. 
whether you hit a deer or somebody ran into your vehicle. We're here to repair your vehicle back to pre-accident condition with an average of 7 to 10 days. Give us a call today and schedule in your repair. Our waiting list is short because of our quick repair time. Look us up on the web or Facebook. Check Auto Body and Towing, Morrison County's largest body shop. Come check us out. Fleet Supply True Value in Little Falls has everything you need for all your outdoor and indoor projects. They have a great selection of tools, kitchen, pet, and paint supplies, footwear, and so much more. Also, check out their great monthly bargains with tons of in-store savings. Fleet Supply True Value, your complete farm and home store. Located in 1800 First Avenue North in Little Falls. Behind every project is a true value. Center Wetter & Company is a regional independent CPA firm dedicated to serving clients with professionalism and integrity. The firm's professional staff's attention to detail and personal touch promote excellent working relationships with their clients. The firm focuses on serving accounting, tax, and business consulting needs of their business, individuals, not-for-profit, and governmental clients. Slender, Winter, and Company in Albany, St. Cloud, Monticello, Maple Lake, in their new location in Little Falls next to the dam, providing high-quality value, added professional service since 1964. Beautiful floors can be yours at WeJet Floors and More. Head out to WeJet Floors and More in Little Falls where they have a huge selection of in-stock carpet, tile, hardwood flooring, and laminate. And when you're there, pick up window treatments and browse through their huge selection of area rugs. And all month long, you can take 10% off area rugs or window treatment at We Shed Floors and More in Little Falls. Better for you, better for you. We Shed Floors and More. We're here with Katie Jackson and Cheryl Plouffe, the mortgage team from Pine Country Bank. I have been in the real estate industry for the past 33 years. I've been a mortgage processor for the last 18 years. Doing mortgage loans as long as we have, we know the ins and outs of doing the mortgages and therefore we try to simplify the process. There's a lot of complicated stuff that goes on behind the scenes and Cheryl and I try to take care of all of that for the borrowers so that they can try to relax and enjoy their time buying versus being stressed out over the very complicated process. All of our years of experience working together allows us to do this for them. We've done several loans for people and now have done loans for their children. People have heard our name in the industry for a very long time now, and we are well known for our expertise in the market. Pine Country Bank is your hometown bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. All right, hockey fans, welcome back to the Exchange Arena. 10-0 here, Flyers lead out of town score. But first of all, uh, fortunately for the boys and girls basketball teams for the Flyers yesterday, their seasons came to an end as it was uh, Sock Rapids defeating Little Falls in boys basketball and Sartell defeated the girls team. So unfortunately, their seasons have come to an end. There are still some wrestlers individually that will be wrestling here coming up to uh, tomorrow, I believe it is. And, uh, of course, there are some other games uh, around the area going on. A final in boys basketball, Moose Lake defeats Piers 59-58. to So the Pioneers season comes to an end. And it looks like Piers is going to advance on in girls basketball as they were leading Royalton 55-28 with about three minutes left in the game. Switching over on the hockey side of things and switching over to Section 6A, Sartell 5-1 lead after two periods against St. Cloud Cathedral. Alexander with a 4-1 lead after two periods of play over Morris Benson and Jamie. Fergus Falls. Third period score, the Fergus Falls Otters 6, Breckenridge Wapaton nothing. All right, so that's the scores of this bracket. Some other scores, Gentry Academy leading eight to nothing. Uh, they look like they're gonna advance on and they'll take on St. Paul Johnson who is a 5-1 winner tonight over St. Paul Highland. Tartan a three nothing winner over South St. Paul or leading I should say South St. Paul that uh, in the third period. Now going to section one last night, you had uh, Dodge County a winner. They will play Albert Lee tomorrow as Albert Lee defeated Faribault three to one. You had Mankato West defeating Rochester Lords. And then the game we talked about in the pregame, pre you had La Crescent defeating Mankato East Loyola. That was their JV team. They beat them three to one. So La Crescent will play Mankato West coming up tomorrow. Yeah, La Crescent the 10 seed, but Mankato East 
because of uh, COVID protocol, the majority of their varsity players unable to play, so they've used their JV team. I think they had 14 kids is what I thought yeah. I saw. So, but uh, still a valiant effort for them, and unfortunately their season comes to an end. In section 2A, Breck is in the semis. They will take on Minneapolis tomorrow. And then Orno, which beats Southwest Christian, will take on Delano. So most of that pretty much was the top seeds except for the Orno minor upset of Southwest Christian. In section 3A, Hutchinson in the semis will take on Wilmer. And then it'll be Litchfield, Dassel, Gokato taking on New Ulm. As those are pretty much the top seeds in that section. As we mentioned, section 4, section 5, Monticello will take on Chisago Lakes. Monticello the one seed, Chisago Lakes the four seed. And the two seed is Northern Lakes. They will take on Pine City. And that game will be coming up tomorrow. So good luck to Northern Lakes. I watched Northern Lakes and Princeton last night. Northern Lakes the two seed, Princeton the 10 seed. Northern Lakes won four to three in overtime. Third period underway, 10-0 our score. And that means we are in running time here. Unless the North Stars can cut the deficit down to five. So clock won't stop unless we have a, an injury or something, or a timeout, I guess, would be the only way. Penalty S shot. Penalty shot. <laughs> we, yeah. ha we had one in the second period. That we Successful, did. Nick Stevens. Two penalty shots this year for the Flyers. They're one for two on that. One for two, 50% on penalty shots. I don't remember if we even had any penalty shots last year at all. Yes, we had a penalty, there was two penalty shots in the Sartell game. Oh, that's right, that's right. One for Sartell, yep. one for Little Falls. Yep, that's right. Nolan Bjorgi had the penalty shot for Little Falls. It was unsuccessful. That was in the regular season, right? It was a regular season game here in Little Falls. Yep. We get a whistle as uh, Gunnar Gustafson slow to get up. So one thing now with uh, the Flyers, uh, with a 10-0 lead, you want to keep your guys as healthy as possible. So there were two penalty shots on January 14, 2020, here at the Exchange Arena. Little Falls beat Sartell 4-3. Tory Lund successful for Sartell in the second period. And three, little over three minutes later, Nolan Bjorgi had an unsuccessful attempt for the Little Falls Flyers. little unique to yeah. see two penalty shots in a game about three minutes apart. Yeah, that's right. I can't remember what I told you at the pregame show I wanted you to look up. Do you remember that? <laughs> Did you want me to look something up? Yeah, I wanted you to, we were talking about something, I totally forgot it. I was gonna say, hey, did you come up with what we were talking about in the pregame show, but I already lost that. So okay. I'll have to watch it back tomorrow and then I'll tell you, and then you can let yep. me know. Homework the assignment game. for Tuesday night. <laughs> oh, it's just one of those days. And you, a 10-0 lead here for the Flyers. You mentioned Gentry Academy. They're the number one seed in Class A. Most recent Let's Play Hockey Bowl, they're 13-0. Prior to tonight's game, they'd outscored their opponents 119-10. But like we talked about, when Gentry Academy beat Little Falls 8-1 on February 4th, penalty issues for the Stars. They've taken 220 penalty minutes in 13 games this season. Can they survive with that many penalty minutes and win a state championship? Well, I noticed uh, their goaltender, Alex Timmons, is up for the Frank Bimzik Award, yep. so. One of three nominees yep. for the Bimzik Award. You know, so, you know, that's one of the reasons why I think uh, with all the penalties, they've been able to uh, stay in these games uh, is the goaltending play of, of Timmons. And when, of course, we saw him here and he, he looked pretty good. Of course, it was a, kind of a lopsided game uh, from about the second period, midway second period on. Well, shots were 52 to 17 for Gentry Academy and that 8-1 win over Little Falls. This will be another icing call coming up with 13-35 and counting here in the third period and a 10-0 lead. So looking at the, the rankings that came out, as you were mentioning, Gentry Academy number one. Hermantown 2, War Road 3, Monomedi 4, Breck 5, East Grand Fork 6, Little Falls 7, Fergus Falls 8, Dodge County 9, and Duluth Denfeld 10. All top 10 teams are still currently playing in the section tournament. Yes, all are still alive. Uh, the 11th ranked team, Southwest Christian, went down to Orono last night. 
But uh, all top 10 are alive. But again, that won't be the case much longer because you've got Monomedi in the same section with Gentry Academy. You've got uh, Duluth Denfeld in the same section with Hermantown, Little Falls and Fergus Falls, of course, in the same section, East Grand Forks and War Road. Those are potential championship matchups. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, also, you know, you start looking down the road a little bit uh, at seeding of the state tournament. And, uh, you know, obviously you're going to have these teams knocking off each other. So, like you said, you're going to have half of those teams that won't even be there. So you start uh, whittling down. Can you get maybe a top five seed at the state tournament? Here's a chance down low and an opportunity for the Flyers once again. Puck was on the doorstep and Hayden Johnson just about had his hat trick. With 12.05 to go here in the third, 10-0. I've, I've got Hayden Johnson with two goals and two assists for four points. That top line for the Little Falls Flyers, Stevens, Phillippe, and Hayden Johnson. They've got six goals. Yeah, Philippi's actually been quiet after scoring the first goal. <laughs> Scored goal number one at the 41 second mark of the first period. And now we've got to send out a search party for Philippi. <laughs> got a whistle I, stoppage of play. I do need to mention something. All right. Because of course- You have to get there, this off your chest. Well, there are some, well, oh. first of all, we're gonna have some penalties. So 33. That's Stevens, and I didn't see who the other 34, one was. 34, I believe he said for... Well, that would be the goal. Nope, there's no 34. Well, that would be Netarozic. Yeah, that'd be the goaltender. I thought he said 34, Prairie Center, 33, Little Falls. <laughs> Time of the minor penalties will be 5.26. Yeah, it looks like 5 it is. Because Chris Hansen's going okay. into the box, so it probably is Netarozic. So they are offsetting minors. Little Falls is Stevens. Netta Rosick from the Prairie Center North Stars at 5.26 of the third period. Uh, both for roughing, they offset, and it remains five on five. All right. Okay, I've been obsessed with the question that you asked the players oh, during the yes. player profiles, yes. which I have to commend you. You do a great job with those interviews as we chronicle the Little Falls Flyers players throughout the season during our period intermissions as you do pregame interviews with the Flyers. And you asked a number of questions, same questions, not necessarily hockey related questions to the players. And one of them was the deserted island question. Here's an opportunity for Klein and a partial breakaway and Dane makes a nice save. And preserves the zero. Out at center it comes. So the, five on five. So the question was related to the deserted island and if, he, if that particular player was on the deserted island, and all his basic needs were covered, what two items would he bring with him to the deserted island? We had a variety of answers, and of course, all along I felt there was an obvious one. I was waiting for one of the players to say what I felt was an obvious answer to the question. And Carter Othout gave the answer on Saturday during his player profile when Little Falls lost to War Road 3 to 1, he said a bolt. Of course you'd want a boat if you were on the deserted island. There are times I'd like to be on a deserted island for a certain period of time, but I wouldn't want to stay there forever. So you need a boat to get off the deserted island. And I give Carter Othout credit. I thought that was the best answer for the deserted island question of the season. Nice. What would be the other thing you'd want to bring, Jamie? Well, I, I, well, I already said yeah, that's true. that when we talked about this during the uh, post-game show, for the War Road broadcast, I said I'd have a Costco-sized box of matches so that I always had fire to stay warm and to cook. Good plug and then there, the by the boat, way. And then, and then the boat to get off the deserted island. Yeah. So that's, that's where I was going with it, and I know there are some people listening thinking he only does is talk about that deserted <laughs> island. I do like Gilligan's Island, though, the okay. show. Well, we'll, uh, we'll come up with five interesting questions okay. for next but, year's team. Uh, that was good. I enjoyed listening to the answers about the deserted island. 
Uh, maybe I'll put you in charge of one or two of those questions so you uh, okay. you can decide. I have all off season to come <laughs> up with questions. You were all ready to go yeah. for uh, an individual that was supposed to join us uh, on an intermission. Yes. You had your that, questions ready and yep, it didn't that happen. That didn't work out. They were in my pocket ready to go. I was going to say, yeah. your, your call of duty yeah. and you didn't You never get a know. Chance. Maybe we'll still get the opportunity. Well, you were, you were ready to do play by play in the River Lakes That's game right. and that fell through yes. too. I mean, I was going to do play by play of the River Lakes game on Flyer Media Productions. Chris Dobas was going to do color, and that all fell through. We do have a hockey game going on for Flying Me Productions. You've seen that. For our radio listening audience, it's still 10-0 with 8.15 to go here in the third. Flyers on the attack once again. Cray will play it down low, gives it to Morrison. Centered it out here to Moore. Shot saved there by Nederosic. Moore picks it up again. Moore now. Pass it over, right side, shot there. Cooper, and the save is made. Actually, Netta Rosick has come out of the net. It's a new net minder, I believe, in there now, and that is uh, Ben Millard, I believe. If I'm, if my... Yes, you're correct. It's Millard that yep. has just come in. He came in on that last whistle we were talking about. You're having the boat. Yep, the and, boat on the deserted island. This is island. the first yes. time Millard has played this year, and he wears a very unusual number. Not unusual to the exchange no. arena. He wears Ben Hanowski's number but nine. But it is number nine that he wears. <laughs> so he made a couple of saves there, his first couple of saves of the game. So Millard is in net for the North Stars here for the remaining seven minutes and change, and so far he's perfect on the saves. Played up to the line, not out yet. Got a little give and go, here's Stevens, they already got six points, and he was looking up her shelf there, and that one just wide. Held in by Inez. Now back to Stevens, cycling around, tips it down low to Hayden Johnson. Johnson couldn't pull the trigger, played to the line, not out. Inez able to keep it in once again. Inside of seven to go here. And a little give and go behind the net there, Johnson to Stevens. He really couldn't get it to his forehand. And we played back all the way down. And an icing call coming up here as the clock continues to move in running time. 6.30 to go here in the third, 10-0 Little Falls. Well, I mentioned it earlier. Flyers primarily play five defensemen coming into tonight's game. Those five defensemen only scored four goals. A 10-goal outburst for Little Falls. And of those 10, just one goal from a defenseman, that was Joe Majerly at 2.48 of the second period on the power play, just Majerly's second of the season. Well, 10 seems to be the number the Flyers like to have against Prairie Center as they won 10 to one on that game on February 18th. Here we are on March 19th and it's 10 to nothing with six minutes left to go here in the hockey game. And the 10 goals scored in this game matches the season high of game of 10 goals against Prairie Center. Nice to see the Flyers uh, putting the puck in the net tonight. And they're going to have to do that coming up again on Tuesday night, most likely against the Sartell Sabres in a rematch, which uh, happened, I believe, that would have been on February 20th. 5.30 to go here in this one. 45-8 to eight are the shots in favor of the Flyers. Of course, in that last game, 66 shots the Flyers had against Prairie Center. Chinsky Halgerson leaves it off now for Gustafson. Gustafson waits, Gustafson shoots. Goes off the back glass. Picked up here by the North Stars. And skating out to center ice here is Williams. I'm having a hard time reading the numbers on the side tonight a little bit. The shoulder numbers? Yeah. The TV numbers? Yeah. Some of them are just kind of tucked yeah, in. It's kind black. of a different font. I don't know. It's the way the jersey different, folds different a little bit. numbering too. I think it's the way the jersey folds on it. You could, be a, you could be a Jersey consultant. I'd be willing to help. Yeah, I know. We've gone to some games, and Jamie's like, how can we even read those numbers? I didn't bring my binoculars. <laughs> well, that's when we're at the MAC, about 180 yeah. feet away from the other end. But we don't have to worry about that this year. And I have no problem being up uh, 300 feet in the air at XL Energy Center. That works out just fine. It's been a while. Here's a tip in front. Nice save there by Millard again. Ben Millard, the junior. He's been perfect. Another shot, another save. 
as that came off the stick of Colin Cray with four minutes and counting here in the third and a 10-0 lead for the Flyers. Pressure from the Little Falls Flyers third line. Cooper centering Morrison and Jake Tchaikovsky. Flyers led 5-0 after one, 10-0 after two. Shots on goal through two periods were 38 to seven. It's currently 47 to eight in the Little Falls Flyers favor. Back once again to the line. Shot taken there by Inez at pinballed right over the net minor Millard. Tchaikovsky in the corner with it. Cooper trying to find it. Played away from him there by Dieters. Not out of the zone yet. Held in and that'll go into the player bench of Prairie Center. We get a whistle and a stoppage of play. And down to 3-10 in counting. And the Flyers are gonna get their 11th win of the season and they'll await the winner of Sartell, St. Stephen and St. Cloud Cathedral. And the last score we had at, after two periods of play was 5-1 Sartell. Let's see if we get a couple score updates here eventually and uh, we'll have our post game show we'll have Tony Kuchar joining us and then we'll have the recap too. Alexandria is leading Morris Benson 6-2 to two with 524 to go in the third period. Shots are 29-22 to 22 in the Cardinals favor. So a couple of score updates. Looks like Saint uh, Sartell now leading 8-1. to wow, one. 8 to and 1. That was the same score last Thursday. Yes, it was. It was an 8-1 win for Sartell a week ago Thursday, and as you mentioned, it's an 8-1 lead for Sartell, and it looks like I'm being told it's a final. I'm being told it's a final. Sartell has advanced. They beat St. Cloud Cathedral 8-1. So the Sartell Sabres will be coming to Little Falls Tuesday night. I believe that'll be a 7 o'clock puck drop. And we'll have that broadcast right here on the outlets you're watching or listening to, Flyer Media Productions, and also on Q92 and streaming online at fallsradio.com. That's the one nice thing, Jamie. I mean, for selfish reasons, for us, we get to be at home, but then also for all the viewers, they get to watch this broadcast too, uh, coming up on Tuesday night. Down to a minute 35 to go, and looks like, uh, I guess for lack of better words, uh, it's gonna be chalk for the four top seeds advancing on to the semifinals, which uh, will put up a very good semifinal Tuesday coming up next week as you'll have uh, Fergus Falls at home, most likely, as uh, they'll win tonight. They'll take on Alexandria. That'll be a great game. And then, of course, Sartell in Little Falls here. Millard with another save. And Ben Millard, he's been the story here of the third period. Yeah, I've got Millard, I think, with five saves. Unofficially, I think Annette Rosick uh, had faced 44 shots, 34 or 44. Have to verify that after the game. And then Millard would be five of five. It'd be nice if those starting times on Tuesday were staggered for the for the viewers at home. So they could, you know, maybe a six o'clock and an eight o'clock so that you could watch the first half of the section, section 6A semifinal doubleheader and then catch the second half. Yeah. Well, I normally would be saying, and we're going to the MAC, you but uh, not this year. I'm, I'm happy with that, actually. So now you'll have to use two screens. You'll use your television, you'll stream in one game, and then you'll have the second game on a laptop. I've done that this oh, season. I, you've done three things. You've I, done the TV, the screen, and the phone, And the phone, right? yes. Yeah. Yep, had three going at once. Yeah. Down to the final 10 seconds of this one. And Little Falls is going to improve to 11-4-1. and one. And they're going to get an opening 10 nothing win against the Prairie Center North Stars to advance on. They will take on the Sartell Sabres Tuesday night, 7 o'clock here at the Exchange Arena. Well, no upsets tonight. Of course, we talked about it in 2011. Little Falls was a one seed. St. Cloud Apollo a nine seed. And the Charlie Pence game, as we've labeled it now for many years, as St. Cloud Apollo as a nine seed, upset Little Falls in the quarterfinal round. Uh, not the case tonight, the Little Falls Flyers, the number one seed. They were in charge from the opening faceoff as they beat the nine-seeded North Stars 10 to nothing. Little Falls is on to the Section 6A semifinals on Tuesday night here at the Exchange Arena. Their opponent, the Sartell Sabres. All right, let's take a break. We'll take our final break. We'll come back. Post-game show coming up next. We'll talk with Tony Kuchar 
We'll give you the summary, and we'll also have the Pizza Ranch player of the game. 10-0 our final, back after this on Fly Media Productions, Q92 and FallsRadio.com. After an accident, it's nice to know where to go. Peterson Body Shop has loaner cars, a lifetime guarantee on workmanship and paint. They work with all insurance companies and repair all makes of vehicles. Remember, it's your insurance, your vehicle, so get the repairs done where you want. Peterson Body Shop is known for quality work in the Little Falls area since 1963. Give them a call at 632-6156. Peterson Body Shop, Highway 27 West, Little Falls. Your best decision after a collision. Just ask your neighbors. Little Falls teens choose kindness. As teens, we interact with a lot of people at school, in activities, at work, at home, and on social media. We know that every person has their own unique aspirations and challenges. That's why it's important to first choose kindness, respect, and support as we interact with many individuals in our daily lives. Choose kindness every day in everything you do. I've got a math question for you. When you add tolerance, subtract prejudice, and multiply efforts to treat one another with respect, what do you get? Less division. And school sports have it down to a science. Looking for an example of what can happen when we realize there's more that unites us than divides us? Look no further than high school sports in Minnesota. This message presented by the Minnesota State High School League and the Minnesota Interscholastic Activities Administrators Association. Ron's Oil and Propane is a locally owned family business that provides superior fuel for farms, homes, and businesses. The Shaper's additive Ron's use will give you the edge for performance and power. Ron's Oil and Propane serves Little Falls, Staples, and Motley area. No hidden fees or charges, just great fuel. Experienced drivers and outstanding customer service. Always competitively priced. Ron's Oil and Propane, 877-256-3680. You have years of memories in your home, the most valuable things you'll ever own. Let us help you protect what matters most. West Bend's Home and Highway Policy provides you with one policy, one bill, one deductible, and one agent, while protecting your home, car, truck, boat, motorcycle, snowmobile, and more, all with no hassle and a portion of your annual premium back in cash. If you join, contact Marsha Agency in the 632-2328. If it's getting mighty hungry, well, the best in the country is Pizza Ranch. The Pizza Ranch in Little Falls reminds you that they offer pickup and delivery. Either order online or call them at 632-8333. It's the Pizza Ranch in Little Falls. It's where life tastes better. So round them up and head down to Pizza Ranch. Whoa, that. Welcome back once again here. Final score in this one tonight. It was Little Falls 10 and Prairie Center nothing as the Flyers advance on in the quarterfinal win to the semifinals on Tuesday night, 7 o'clock here at the Exchange Arena in Little Falls. They will take on the Sartell Sabres, which were an 8-1 to winner tonight over St. Cloud Cathedral. We'll get to all that stuff coming up in just a moment. Head coach Tony Kucher, I believe, will be joining us shortly. Of course, it is uh, traditionally, Jamie, this would actually be the last game for the seniors here because normally after this you'd go on to the semis, which would be at the MAC, but that's not the case. But it's kind of almost feels like that tonight. A little bit, and uh, unusual situation this year with not going to a neutral site for the section semifinals and finals. I sure hope that continues next year. I don't want to see this to be a trend where the number one seed has home ice throughout the Section 6A playoffs. I like the idea that we go to a neutral site on typically a Saturday for the semifinals and then for the championship game also uh, on a neutral site if St. Cloud Cathedral is not playing. (laughs) But uh, we like the idea of having both semifinal games at the same site. And that will not be the case on Tuesday night as we will have semifinal games at two different sites as the Fergus Falls Otters will host 
the Alexandria Cardinals. We believe that's the case. We don't have a finals yet from either of those games, but the Otters had a commanding lead over Breckenridge Wapiton, and Alexandria had a comfortable lead on Morris Benson. And of course, we know that Little Falls will host Sartell Tuesday night. Joining us now is the head hockey coach of Little Falls Flyers, the winning coach of the Flyers, uh, Tony Kucher. And Tony, a nice win tonight, a 10-0 yeah. win, and you, you got on the scoreboard early and yeah. often tonight. Yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, part of, uh, you know, the playoffs. You want to get out to an early lead, and, and uh, you know, we tried to focus on some, some other things, okay. you know, with the, with the face-offs and uh, things like that, so... But uh, yeah, it was a good game for us. I thought our puck movement was good. I thought we finally started going to the net a little bit more instead of going on the perimeter and taking bad shots. So yeah, we scored a couple power play goals. We had talked about that too in your pregame show and uh, tonight uh, a couple power play goals. You did it against the Otters. You didn't have any power play goals against Wara, but a couple more here. So you've had yeah. four power play goals in your last three games. Yeah, ooh, ooh, that, that's pretty good for us. <laughs> so It's cause for celebration is, after the is, game. It is some celebration, Speaking absolutely. Speaking of celebration, we might as well bring it up now. Uh, okay. The goal scored by Jake Chakowski. After the goal was scored, you grabbed a stick and said, you got to go like this. Uh, yeah. And I raised it. I saw the whole thing over here. Explain that a little bit, well, what you were saying. Well, I, I thought the, the goal went in, and I, I stood there for a little bit, and nobody celebrated. And and then finally, they it was in the net, you know, the official. And so I said, Jake. I said, let me see your stick. And I said, you got to raise it up when you score. So <laughs> get excited. So Absolutely. I, I, and I thought, uh, you know, he had some jump tonight. Um, you know, it's too bad he crashed in the net a little bit, got a little bit of a thigh bruise, so kind of hampered him the rest of the game. But he had uh, he had some giddy up tonight, and uh, I thought that was good to it's see a, that. It's amazing if he had a thigh bruise because he yeah. was still out on that same yeah. shift and scored. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, he, he stayed out. And, wow. Uh, but yeah, it was a, it was a good thing, and you know you never want to get an injury in the in the playoffs. And right. but um, yeah, I thought it was good, you know. And you know, I think you know we gave up a couple shots, but you know Dane had a you know a breakaway save. And yep. Got a, it's very difficult as a goaltender to to be out there. Yeah, nice shout out yeah. for Dane tonight. I think yeah. Tony, as the number one seed, you wanted to set the pace early. You didn't want to give the North Stars any thoughts of getting an upset in this right. game, and uh, you really took care of business at yeah. the, right away from the opening face-off. Well, and that's I think that's what you have to do because it, in games like this, you don't want them to linger around for a long period of time. And, and uh, you know, we call it thinking that they're in the game. Um, nothing against them, but, uh, you know, we don't want them to think that they, they're they going to play and, and they're just, you know, they just kind of linger around. So, um, yeah, tough opponent next with Sartell. They're on a, they're on a high streak and, and uh, we'll be ready at home here on Tuesday night. So... That'll be a big game for us, and uh, and again uh, with probably Fergus and Alex uh, in Fergus. So, you know, two two pretty good teams. All uh, you know, all have had pretty good seasons amongst each other. So, it's anybody's ball game, and and uh, you know we like uh, and like our chances. Just the fact that we're at home. Tony, is it how much of an advantage is it to play at home Tuesday night? Typically, these semifinal games are at the MAC in St. Cloud, yeah. so that people can come to one site and yeah. watch both games but how much of an advantage will it be for you to play in your own building against the Sabres on Tuesday? Well I think it is a big thing I think for, uh, first of all we have last change uh, it didn't come into play tonight we didn't really have to match lines or anything but it, it does come into play uh, you know if, if we want a, a certain matchup and uh, we have our home fans here, though, you know, you, you can't get a whole lot of people in here uh, at this time. But then, you know, we have our locker room and, and we can use our locker room and they're and they're not we're not hopping on a bar, uh, a bus or a, a their own car to go somewhere. So uh, I think it's a huge advantage. But, uh, you know, if, if you look uh, in back history, I mean, it doesn't always happen just because you're the home seat. We've been upset uh, a couple times by Fergus, a couple times by uh, Northern Lakes just in the past 10 years, Apollo. Got, we're going to be coming on about 10 years of that uh, one beating nine in that section game uh, against uh, St. Cloud Apollo. So it is a huge advantage uh, just for the fact that we're we're familiar with everything, um, and that's it's nice to have that. And you guys are here. Yeah, so. we like we like yeah, this. Yeah, so. we like this. This nice, comfortable yeah. setting. All good. Yeah, you know? absolutely. 
Nick Stevens, three goals and three assists. Um, yeah. It had been, I would say, somewhat quiet maybe in the scoring department the last few games, but uh, he was ready tonight. He was ready tonight, and, and it was kind of funny. He, he got that penalty shot. The, I, I don't think I've ever seen a, a, a somebody throw their stick before. It's been a long time. So uh, when he threw a stick, we knew it was going to be a penalty shot, so I told the ref to go over. Nick has had some... some some problems scoring breakaway goals mm -hmm. this year. And uh, we told the ref to go and say that w we were thinking about declining it because he can't score any goals. So <laughs> he did go he did go over there and tell him that. It was good humor with that. And then, you know, you you looked at, uh, you look at center ice and Nick was kind of a little worried. It was shaking his head a little bit and we were laughing on the bench. And so have a little bit of fun on the bench tonight. We had the, our five, uh, f five D out there in the last shift. And we had our third line out there trying to get, uh, uh, Matthew Cooper a goal, but it didn't happen. But uh, you know, it, uh, it's it's fun. You know, it's it's uh, on the and there's not a lot of pressure and and uh, it's a good it's a good feeling when you win a game and yep. and you can have a little bit of fun with the kids. So you were seriously considering giving Stevens the Muppet Show type hook from center well, ice and declining the penalty. We were thinking about it. We were two two for two on our power play. So and it was our second group that had been out there and. We've been working pretty hard, and Nick's on our first power play, and they did have a, a little bit of chance and didn't score, and then we put our second unit out there, and we started our second unit the second time, and they scored both goals. So uh, why not throw our second group out there and not give him an opportunity? But I would love to have been yeah. at that conversation yeah. afterwards tonight so, if that would have happened. But, but uh, <laughs> good oh thing well. that he scored. He got his hat trick and right. a six-point night for Nick. And, of course, uh, it was a good point right. night for a lot of kids tonight. And this, you, you matched your ten points that you had against them the last yeah. game, too. Yeah, and, you know, you gotta you got to call off the dogs here. And, right. you know, we only had three lines tonight to go to and, and try to get our third line out there as much as we can. And uh, in that last period, it goes fairly fast. Uh, you know, we did switch the goaltenders at the five-minute mark. Uh, Richie got in there yep. at the end though he didn't get any shots and but uh, everybody you know for the most part got to play and uh, that we had in the lineup you know we, we we never ask you any serious questions so but I gotta ask the hat did you wear yep. it to War Road I did okay yeah. so it's uh, only good for home games then it must be okay. so I mean it, it just brought us some good luck and I thought we played pretty well against uh, War Road too it wasn't uh, it wasn't an eight to one loss. So. No, but what you say, so the hat's good for home. Yeah. So that's a good yeah, thing. It's, and so, then yeah. I got to ask you, you know, we've asked the kids this all year long and Jamie is always, uh, he gave us his answer. But uh, if you haven't heard, I've been asking the kids, <laughs> if you were deserted on, a, on an <laughs> island and you had to have two things that you could bring, what would you bring, coach? Two things that I could bring. Yep. Um, I know I'm putting you on the spot right here, but, you know. It's a 10 nothing win tonight. I figured, you know, we could maybe mix it up a little <coughs> bit. Does it have to be a thing? Or well, it's just you have the food, you have the water, be, yeah. anything you, you the, want. Well, I would think that uh, I would probably have to bring some sort of satellite television to watch, <laughs> uh, okay. watch some kind of hockey or watch gotcha. something. Yeah. Um, and then I'd probably bring my wife. I, great answer, Tony. <laughs> I was thinking he's got to say Kelly. He's got to say Kelly. Yeah. Great job. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I, I, he's well, a goalie. Yeah, you saves. Don't wanna, yeah, saves yeah. all night long. You don't want to be by yourself <laughs> exactly. the whole time. You, if I'm going to be miserable, I might as well, you know. But she, she's great to talk to. And, I mean, she, yeah. Awesome. Why not? Bring well, there your you wife. go. Yeah. So satellite I'm TV impressed. and Kelly. Yeah. I think it's perfect. I think it's a perfect time yeah. just to end this. She can, she, can, uh, she, can, she can watch the Hallmark Channel, and I can watch uh, hockey at night. So. There you go. That <laughs> works. Absolutely. That so. works. The highlight of the night, Coach Kuchar's taking his wife <laughs> to the deserted island. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to do it, you know. Awesome. Yeah, well, so, Coach, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, I know it feels good to get a win like this, and yeah. uh, now you have to buckle down on Tuesday night. Absolutely. It's, it'll be a good game. Uh, they have uh, much improved probably since we played them last time and hope, uh, hoping that we are also. So should be a, a darn good game, and uh, hopefully, uh, again, we can, we can continue to score some goals like we did tonight. Congratulations Thank on you. the win, and uh, we continue yeah. on to Tuesday. Absolutely. we got... Uh, we got some food in the back uh, for us. Uh, little lunch and, for us. Little, grab, little and go, lunch. little grab and go for you in the back. So 
uh, make sure that you get a get a little bit to eat before you leave. We never go home hungry. The no, hospitality here is the best. That's <laughs> yep. why I want to stay here the whole time. So Absolutely. we're good. Yeah. Coach, congratulations yeah, thank you on very the win. Much. I appreciate it. And, and uh, again, thanks to Flyer Media Production and all the kids that uh, are working. Yep. I don't know who we got over there. Uh, Willie's over there. Willie's yep. over there. And then Little we got Willie. anybody else around? Uh, I think the like rest of them left. Okay. Or they're maybe yeah. tearing down some stuff. Yeah. But yeah. When awesome. you're on, we just need one camera. Yeah, yep. that's right. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate Thanks, coach. it. Thanks, Coach. Yep, bye-bye. We'll talk to you once again coming up on Tuesday, and that's the head hockey coach of the Little Falls Flyers. That is Tony Kuchar. And, well, there you go. We, we I, I figure I'd throw it out on the spot there, and uh, that the answer was perfect for you. He doesn't miss a beat, does no, he? No, no. He doesn't miss a beat. I'm thinking, okay, at, he's got to say Kelly. He's got to say his wife, and he did. Yep. Good job. Good job indeed. Good job. Uh, we didn't, of course, I didn't want to ask him how he was going to power up that satellite <laughs> TV without any electricity, yes. but I thought, you never know. You, you know, maybe deserted islands are a little different than what we saw on Gilligan's Island. Possibly. Well, we'll, we'll have to ask him afterwards here today. <laughs> or a solar-powered satellite TV system. That could be. It could be. It could be a windmill or it could be solar power. All right, for our viewing audience, we want to thank once again Mark Deal and the entire staff and the production crew behind. They do a phenomenal job. I mean, we get the easy job here of uh, just calling the game. They're the ones that put everything together. You see Owen Swisher, Will Felkelb, along with the Caden Olson, the graphics Karen Warner, and, of course, director Mark Deal. Mark, thanks so much once again for what you've done for Flyer Media Productions. Uh, it is a great product. I have heard nothing but great things about it through the community, uh, through the state. Uh, we, we're, we're, they've been talking about us uh, on podcasts and everything <laughs> else. It's crazy, but yeah. that's how much uh, the excitement uh, that is with this Flyer Media production. So just kudos to you guys behind the scenes. You guys do a phenomenal job, and if it was this easy, it would be tougher for us to do. So thanks so much for that. Nope, again. we're proud to be part Absolutely. of it, and we look forward to Tuesday night. Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, 6.30 pregame on Flyer Media Productions. So until Tuesday night, at least for our television audience, James Hershey and Jamie Pettit saying good night.